but I think the development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top of it. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. Can you send their lights in the sky? The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. Well, that's that's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. to Troubled Minds Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. What's going on, guys? It is Monday. Happy Monday. It's one of the days we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. We do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. What are those things we're not allowed to talk about? Well, there's too much, so I'm going to have to sum up. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. What's up? What's up? I see you guys out there in the chat. Hope everybody's doing well. This is, well, you know what? This is this is a weird one. This is one of those ones that uh, kind of comes together when you're just talking about things. When you're talking and thinking about things. As you know, I do a news show on Monday and Friday, and we were doing the news show today, and some things kind of came together. It was, it was strange, to say to say the least. Strange, as in Doctor Strange. You guys seen Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness? Yeah, well... Uh, uh, they do a thing called dream walking. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to be talking about dreams tonight. And not just dreams in terms of lucid dreaming, which, of course, we can touch on that. But what about some other versions of dreaming? What about, let's say, the keepers of dreams? Well, is it possible that somewhere out there there's a, some entities that are actually, mm, let's say, maybe manipulating the dreamscape, the actual dream state that we all share in our sleeping consciousness? So anyway, there's a couple couple things to get started with some, some thoughts here. But we were doing the news show, and it turns out that uh, today, uh, <laughs> brand new, hot off the press, a not only the dreamscape stuff with um, uh, again the MCU that's the Marvel Cinematic Universe of course and Doctor Strange and the dream walking which we'll get to which is pretty wild the idea but also uh, Netflix released a trailer for the Sandman today aha uh-huh, the Sandman so yeah so in, in case you haven't seen that or know anything about that we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight uh, of course it isn't out yet it's just the trailer I think it, it drops the first week of August on Netflix but it it has some pretty Pretty interesting concepts regarding not just, um, let's say, the dreamscape, as I described there, but also uh, maybe who controls those dreamscapes, and is there some sort of war going on over it? So just uh, just some thoughts to get us going. As you know, we do the show live to include you, all right? 
We are talking about dreams tonight, lucid dreaming and uh, the MCU and Sandman from Netflix. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this because this is a two-way conversation. I can I can talk myself blue in the face and uh, where's Ronald when you need him to make fun of my blue camera because I got this blue hue right now for some reason. Just call me Smurf, Mr. Strange the Smurf. But um, but okay, so the thing is, is let's, let's talk. As you know, Troubled Minds is less of a show, more of a conversation. And so uh, I, I invite you to join the conversation tonight. And you can do that. Uh, we're, of course, streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, D Live, and Twitter, and we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And we're taking your phone calls, and you can reach myself and the show at 702 957 1037. That's 702 957 1037, and we'll put you on the show. It's as easy as that. And uh, I do have a track record of being nice to you, so. I'm not the guy that you call and I just uh, try and dunk on you for no no particular reason. I'm actually uh, I'm actually going to be nice to you. So all I ask is that you be nice to me in return. That's as easy as that. That's how conversations go, right? If you want people to talk to you, you got to be nice. So hey, uh, please be nice to me and I'll be nice to you. There you go. Easy as that. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. Of course, uh, Discord is a chat client. It's a voice client. It's totally free. And uh, as long as you have an internet connection and you can uh, you can uh, come say hi, come, uh, come meet all the amazing people on the discord at troubled minds and uh, of course on fringe as well so uh we're like i said we're streaming on the fringe fm so fringe.fm slash chat will give you a direct invite to that discord server as well and i'm watching all the all the chat in all the places trying to incorporate your thoughts into the show as we go which makes this a little different than many many other shows because there's not a live element to uh like a live feedback to the chat or the calls as uh, as much as this this is as interactive as it gets really and and I enjoy it that way because um, I like to challenge you guys in the way we think about things and uh, I like for you guys to do the same back to me so um in my opinion, that's how a good conversation goes. So there we go. That's where we where we start, okay? One more time, 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubleminds.org. Uh, also, uh, please download the Fringe app. You can find that. Uh, it's the easiest way to listen to the Fringe FM. That's digital radio. And uh, you can uh, actually be part of that at uh, uh, your favorite, uh, let's see, that's going to be Apple or your Android app store. It's completely free. It's the Fringe FM app. Download it. Smash the play button at 7 p.m. Pacific time, Monday through Thursday. You get me. You get you, you get troubled minds and all the rest of the great programming that goes on to the fringe FM. Okay. I think that, I think that covers it. I think that, uh, sets us all up for dream time. You guys ready for dream time? All right. So it goes like this, right? Uh, like I said, we were doing, we were doing the news show and this idea of the Sandman came up. Okay. And I saw this, uh, and not only that, uh, so we got some help. I, I got a, uh, some shout out to some friends of mine, friends of the show. You guys know who these folks are. Uh, James Night Stalker Rivers, of course, a talking about uh, these dreams, these dream states. And, uh, and I think uh, the, the one that, that, that I tip, tipped me off about this Sandman thing was, of course, the Night Stalker, Derek in Massachusetts. He sent, I think he sent one to Discord late last night. And I didn't really watch it then. I just saw it and was like, oh, cool, Sandman, what is that? And then I saw it today, uh, just before the news show, and was like, ooh, this sounds interesting. So, okay, so here's the thing, right? With the Sandman, it's an interesting story. Okay, and uh, we're going to get to that in a moment. We're going to get to that. Uh, here, let's do this. Uh, this is uh, we'll go straight to MSN. This is the article that I found, and uh, it's talking about, of course, the Sandman. And uh, here you go. So Netflix released the full trailer for its upcoming series, The Sandman, on June sixth. That's today, during Geeked Week. It gave fans the first look at the long-awaited series, which stars Tom Sturridge as Dream, the titular Sandman. Now, the show is based on the DC comic series of the same name by Neil Gaiman. Is it Gaiman? G-A-I-M-A-N, which was published from 1989 to 1996, okay? Uh, so, uh, let's see. In the Sandman trailer, Dream, also known as Morpheus, is freed after being held captive for 105 years. Now... He sat on restoring order to his kingdom of the dreaming. Netflix also released teaser posters as well as character posters for Jenna Coleman as Johanna Constantine and Boyd Holbrook as the Corinthian. Now, a lot of these characters to me, uh, again, you know, the DC comics, the Marvel comics and the rest of that stuff. You know, there's a there's a war there. Some people are DC people and some people are Marvel people. Now, this is a DC thing. And it sounds pretty wild to me because they're talking about like if you, if you look in terms of um uh, the, the Marvel comics, they have many, many, many super old entities that sort of run 
the multiverse, right? Like the the celestials and like the uh, what were the not, not the old ones, but there's uh, there's another group of um, the Watchers, I believe they're called. There's so, there's so many like old 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 entities in the Marvel universe, uh, the comics, of course, that go back a long time. But in this particular, uh, uh, let's say DC universe, uh, like I said, I'm not as familiar with it, but it's it seems to be this situation with uh, these guys known as. Let me find it real quick. Hold on, hold on. Uh, it was in here somewhere. Okay, uh, so there's a there's a group of let's say uh, greater gods that control different parts of of the uh, the actual thing here. So here we go. I'm going to read this straight from TheVerge.com and I'll leave this to you, and you can uh, you can get this uh, on what I mean because they know more about this than I do. But listen to this. Uh, so uh, is a the Sandman tells the tale of a timeless anthropomorphic being who lords over a realm of dreams. But the Sandman being in question isn't the only supernatural power player with an important role in shaping this story. And the Sandman's latest trailer that dropped as a part of the, the, this year's, uh, again, Geeked Week of Netflix, Dream of the Endless, is finally on the verge of breaking free from his 75 years of imprisonment in the mortal plane. So we have 105 years, 75 years. But he was actually captured by human occultists doing some sort of ritual that captured the Sandman, okay, and imprisoned him. Uh, it says, though... Time means little to people like Dream, again, a.k.a. Morpheus. His absence from the dreaming, which the dreaming is a capital D, it's a way to describe the realm itself. The dream realm itself is known as the dreaming. In reality, made of all the dreams living creatures create. Comes with the consequences that only those touched by magic like Johanna Constantine can perceive, the character in the, uh, the story here. The new trailer features a number of glimpses of how, in Dream's absence, the dreamings become a warped, broken place where nightmares like the Corinthian are free to run wild and wreak havoc on people's minds. Okay, all right, so you get it. Now, this individual, Morpheus, or AKA the Dream, the Sandman, this guy rules over the dreaming, which, of course, is dreamland, it, it, where all beings share the consciousness of our dreams, okay? But here's the thing. As they say, right, well, the cat's away, the mice will play, and they've imprisoned him by, by some accounts, 75 years, some say 105 years. And so while the cat's away, the, the let's say, administrator of the dreaming or dreamland or dream time well, uh, things start to go amiss, and people are running amok and causing problems in dreamland. So, of course, he, he breaks out of his prison or becomes, uh, becomes free after a particular time, and now he's got problems to fix, okay? So, interesting, like I said, that's just a very crude, uh, from reading, reading, reading a quick, synop quick synopsis of the, the old series, The Sandman, and uh, without any spoilers, and this is why I like to get ahead of these shows, by the way, so... By the time that it comes around, you, we can, you can kind of go back and have this as a reference of maybe a different way to look at the, the story. And it's interesting how some of the things we talk about in these, these shows, these troubled mind shows, kind of come to pass when they finally do tell the story. It's like we're, uh, again, uh, shout out to the Night Stalker, the synchro mystics in the, in the crowd um, are, are so locked into this stuff that they kind of know what's going to happen, even though... These movies are not directly based on the comics. It's sort of loose interpretations and adaptations. So anyway, so I, I, this whole idea, not just the uh, the dream, the dreaming or dreamland from the uh, DC comics, right, got me thinking in terms of also the Marvel MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right, which is, um, again, just came out with um, Doctor Strange, the, uh, the, the, the multiverse of madness. But the crazy part about that in particular is they have something called dreamwalking. Ah, uh, dreamwalking. And uh, through the use of the book of uh, Vile Darkness, or actually it's called something else, but uh, they're able to cast this spell that allows them through sort of this lucid dream state to infect or possess their, a different version of themselves in the multiverse. Right, they're able to actually, uh, let's say, uh, me in this in this in this uh, reality, I'm able to cast this spell from this book. I'll get the name of the book in a second. I can't remember it, but I'm able to, uh, let's say, possess a different Michael Strange in a different multiverse that may be who knows, like a plumber or who knows, uh, uh, whatever you name it. Right, uh, the, the other Michael Strange in the other universe is he's me, but he's also somebody else entirely. 
But through this spell, through this dream walking spell, you're actually able to pass into these other dimensions, these other strands of the multiverse, and possess the person that you are that are all connected through the multiverse itself. So it got me thinking in terms of a few questions, right? So the, the questions tonight are this, all right? As we go, as you know, uh, we talk about this stuff in terms of questions because I'm, I'm, this is a question show, not the answer show, because answers are easy and propagandists are quick to fire answers. I think answers are boring because uh, they're usually not right. And um, also it's more interesting to, to ask questions and uh, kind of consider all the things. So here's the things I'm considering and wondering about tonight. And of course, the dream, the dream time or the dreaming, the, the zone known as the dreaming. Number one, where do we go when we dream? Okay, meaning, is it sort of locked into our own consciousness or is there some space where we dream together? Meaning that, uh, let's say if you dreamt about me last night, and I say that in the most, um, uh, let's say, G-rated way, everybody relax. Uh, let's say you did, and I came by and uh, handed you a Snickers bar, because we were talking about Snickers bars this past week uh, weekend on the Discord there, and uh, or the, actually on the, the last show on Friday, I believe. Um, but uh, so, so the thing is this, if I came in your dream and handed you a Snickers bar, were we actually sharing the same dream space? And whether I remembered it or not, uh, were we still there together? You know what I mean? Or were you, let's say, locked into another version of Michael Strange that uh, met you in your dream, and that version of the Michael Strange remembers the dream? You see where I'm going with this? Meaning, do we share the same space, and how does it work with different realities? Are you able to dream with the Michael Strange of the next reality, or am I able to dream with the you of another reality as well? So that's the first question here. How does all that work? The dream space itself are we dreaming in the same space, also known as the dreaming, okay? There's the first question. Where do we go when we dream and do we share the space, all right? Number two, the other question, the next question becomes, now if it's a shared space, this the dreamy land or the dreaming, whatever we want to call this place, this space, this dimension, dream dimension, whatever it's called, right? Let's say that... Uh, if it's a space we all share, do you think there are administrators of the dreaming of this dream space? Meaning people that uh, sort of set the rules of dreams, uh, maybe uh, change the reality of how we dream together or cannot maybe uh, separate us if we're, we're too close in a dream or things like this. Just make the overall rules. Just like, let's say there would be a creator in this universe, right? People say uh, the the. Uh, the God or the God-like or things like this. Is there a, let's say, administrator or let's say even the police of a dream state, a dreamscape? You think there's somebody who actually runs that and then has maybe even a goon squad that enforces it, all right? So there's that second question. Third question is, if so, do you think it's possible to do like the dream walking says? Somehow be able to dip into another reality and maybe contact another version of yourself through the dream state. A few questions there, some ideas. What about lucid dreaming? How does this come about? What's actually going on when we dream? And uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, the Necronomicon. What's up? I see you guys in the chat. How you doing? <laughs> there you go. There you go. I see you guys. Uh, good stuff. Uh, so, okay. So th those are the questions. That's what's on my mind tonight. There's a lot to this, of course, because um, we, we've talked about dreams a lot on this show because it is one of those places where uh, some people describe uh, astral travel, right? Uh, describe maybe out of body experiences through the dream state. Okay. So, which is good, which is fine. If you think that we're actually in uh, some sort of, um, let's say uh, the dream state allows us to actually astrally travel and that stuff is real or if it's not real, I don't know. I don't know. I think that like, like I, I was going to tell you guys a dream I had, but I don't want to bore you that I'm not David Wilcock or any, any Corey Good or any of those guys, if you know what I mean, wink, wink. I'm not going to tell you my dreams because it's boring because it's, uh, it's mostly boring personal stuff. And it's like, eh, who wants to hear this crap, but I want to hear your dreams, right? Meaning this, that if you think that there are dream states that we share with each other, like a shout out to Lacey. I don't know if you're out there on the Fringe FM. She called a while back when we were doing a dream show. And she said that she always keeps a dream journal because she wants to be able to, as soon as she wakes up, remember her dreams and jot down what happened and the rest of this, right? And then also be able to verify. And she this sticks with me after all this time. We had a quick conversation about this months, months, months ago. But she said that uh, she would even, when she was young, uh, keep this dream journal. 
And she would ask people at school. She had a dream about them like, oh, you were in my dream last night. Do you remember me in your dream as a way to sort of verify whether or not we shared this dream state together, right? And that's the question. That's how uh, that's how we get really, really nuts here, because why not? Why not get nuts when we're talking about this stuff? Because dreams are fascinating as hell. And it could be, you know, like they say, it's just a, a way for our brain to sort of knock out the, uh, the daily doldrums and sort of exercise itself while we're sleeping. And, you know, it's part of the REM sleep cycle and, you know, a whole bunch of this. And that's fine scientifically. But I think if you, if you know anything about lucid dreams and being able to control your dreams, this whole idea of a shared a dreamscape takes on a whole new meaning, right? Because if we can share these dreams, let's say that uh, I dreamt about you or you dreamt about me and we were in a dream together. I walked by, handed you a Snickers bar and, uh, Let's say you don't like a Snickers bar. So in the dream, right, my dream self brought something to you, whether it, what, whatever it was going to be. But your lucid dream was like, no, no, ixnay that I want a Kit Kat. And so you changed the dreamscape that we shared together, right, with your lucid dream. So lucid dreaming in this sense becomes a whole nother level of, let's say, I don't know, cheat codes or power-ups in, in, in dream cycles, right? And that sort of thing. So I don't know, like, how does this fit? Does it fit at all? Do you think that uh, lucid dreaming is so so much different than uh, just a regular dream state? And do you think that uh, maybe there's something actually going on? It's produced like a gay man. Okay, G-A-I-M-E-N, not gay man, gay man. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. What's going on, guys? I just see in the chat, uh, Neil Gaiman is pretty awesome, says Jennifer. Thank you for, uh, there you go. Life is but a maybe juice-filled dream, says the Night Stalker. And that's what we're doing tonight, as usual, drinking the maybe juice and considering all the things. So what do you think regarding the Sandman? Uh, the first, uh, back to the questions again. Do we share dream states, uh, meaning dreamscapes? Do we actually go to the same place to dream? And can we bump into each other sort of inadvertently? Like, oh, hey, what are you doing here? Or is it completely confined to our own head? Number two, do you think that there's any, let's say, uh, uh, bah, bah, bah. If we share these dream states, uh, is there administrators of the dreams, meaning somebody that runs uh, sort of like the Adjustment Bureau from uh, the Philip K. Dick? Actually, it's called the uh, what's it called? The Adjustment Team is the actual um, story he wrote regarding that, where they were sort of the keepers of time. Do you think there are keepers of dreams, right? And then, of course, what about this dream walking situation? What does this mean? Do you think there's anything to this? And how come so many dreams suddenly just go boom, boom, boom in? the zeitgeist we're talking about the multiverse of madness and dream walking with dr strange so hot on the heels of that is this release of the sandman coming out in early august on netflix do you think this is just a i don't know a coincidence or do you think there's something more to this and that my friends is what's on my mind tonight you tell me. As usual, right? I don't have answers here. Uh, I just thought this was a fascinating thing that all the dreams sort of came together in a moment, in a moment of a news show on a Monday afternoon. And I thought, hmm, the Sandman, hmm, the MCU and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and this bizarre phenomenon known as dream walking. What do you know about this? Do you think it's more or less than this or something in between? Love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More Dreamwalking, The Sandman, and The Keepers of Dreams when we return. And your calls, of course. Be right back. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter, and we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And tonight, we're taking your phone calls as we discuss the idea of dreamwalking, of the Sandman, of the dreamscape. Do you think the dreamscape or the dreamland or... 
Wherever we go when we dream is a shared experience, or do you think it's very personal and locked off? Love to hear your thoughts on that. The next thing, what about the Sandman? Do you think somebody out there actually has dominion over the dreamscape itself, or as Marvel Comics is known... They call it, or sorry, DC Comics, they call it The Dreaming. I don't know. There's a lot to this, a lot to think about, a lot to consider, as always, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. One more time, that's 702-957-1037, or click the Discord link at troubleminds.org. Let's go to Matt in Colorado. Matt, are you there? Test one, two. Let's test the Discord. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. What's up, Matt? How are you? Happy Monday. Wow, I got the Discord working. Great. Nice. Nice. Everything's purring like a kitte. What are your thoughts on this, my man? What do you know about dream walking? Um, you know, I, I got so many thoughts. And, you know, you and I have had some conversations before. And, um, you know, dreaming, dream walking, that's, that's my bailiwick. That's, that's my deal. It's been my deal for a long time. So, um, you know, like your caller from the news uh, today, with which I listened to, I've got dream journals, stacks of them, uh, going back 30 years. Yeah, I'm a dreamer. That, that's been deal. And <clears throat> so there's, and I just want to say it's a pathway. Okay, so that's one thing is, is I think of dreaming and what's available to that, from that, to us all, is a pathway to like, you know, higher consciousness or, or higher knowledge or whatever. And there are so many pathways. There's there's drumming, there's shamanism, um, you know, there's people who do hallucinogens, and, you know, there's a, a lot of different, you know, flotation tanks. There's a lot of different ways that you can get information. Um, you can access higher consciousness, whatever. But dreaming, I think, is one of those. And what I think is a really cool thing about dreaming, right, is we all do it and we all do it every night. So <clears throat> it's a very accessible pathway. You, you don't have to learn any ceremonies. You don't have to go to, you know, uh, some kind of spiritual retreat somewhere across the world and, and learn some kind of complex rituals. This something is available to everybody every night. Now, there's some people that, you know, say they don't remember their dreams very well. Or, or at all. Some people remember a few. Some remember them very vividly. Well, I've been one of these people that I remember, you know, two, three, five, sometimes six dreams a night. Not necessarily every night, but I'll, I'll go on stints. I'll remember tons of dreams. And I, I have stacks of dream journals. So um, I just want to say it's, it's an available pathway to everybody that doesn't take, you know, 20 years of meditation or hallucinogenic drugs. It's just, you go to bed every night and it's available to you. Um, probably the, the second point I want to make about dreaming is I think if you want to understand dreaming, there's a really important thing to understand. And that is there are many different types of dreams. Okay. So it's not one thing. We're not just talking about, Oh, dreaming. It's one thing. No, there's many different types of dreams. So this is from my personal experience and, and from what other people say. So, you know, number one, <clears throat> the most um, scientific based thing is, oh, dreams are um, the conscious mind processing down to the subconscious mind, all the information that you took into uh, yourself during the day to be stored and categorized and processed. Okay, so that's that's all dreaming is. Okay, great. Well, that's very uninteresting. I I do believe that happens. I've witnessed many dreams that I would be like, yeah, I'm just storing stuff of what happened during the day and found a way for later use. Okay, so that does happen, but that's very uninteresting. Okay, so let's go to the next. The next level of dreaming is like symbolic dreaming. So this is where you have dreams where you're getting symbolic messages in dreams. And maybe this is something like either your subconscious communicating to you. Maybe it's some people might call their their higher consciousness or or their higher self or their or their soul or their spirit. And it's it's an attempt to deliver you a message or maybe just your conscious mind, whatever. But it's what it's doing in those dreams, the symbolic dreams. It's embodying a message in the dreams 
that it hopes you can decode and understand the next day. And, you know, so there's different types of dream interpretation and Jungian uh, dream analysis. So you can take those dreams, write them down, try and understand them, and get maybe some kind of benefit or some kind of message, something you're overlooking in your life, something you could focus on, etc. Okay, so that's a second level of dreaming. Third level of dreaming. I'm not going to go into this one very much, but I think I've discovered there's a type of dreaming I call healing dreams. So this healing dreams are something that just happens in dream time that just, it makes you better. It, it heals you. It heals you either emotionally, it can heal you physically. There's something going on in, in dream time that, it, it you know, maybe we can't explain it, maybe we can't understand it, but it has a beneficial effect to you. Now, when I've in you know had dreams, recorded dreams, I try and in, interpret them symbolically. But if I can't interpret them symbolically, a lot of times I realize, oh, that's just a healing dream. In other words, I don't need to interpret it. It doesn't mean anything. It just was a beneficial process that healed me and made me better. Okay, so then we'll go on to the fourth level of dreaming, which is perhaps astral travel. And I'm just, you know, I'm I'm artificially numbering these. Okay, they do perhaps go up a little bit in scale. But there's astral travel dreams. And, you know, and astral travel, it's sort of like an out-of-body experience, but you're only on the astral level. And I've I've had many of those. Um they're they're tricky, they're tough. A lot of times you get out of your body, you can see your body in bed, and then as soon as you do, boom it snaps you right back in your body. It it shocks you. It startles you. It's really hard, you know, with the astral travel stuff to like stay out of your body and not freak out, right? Like the shock of it snaps you back in. But when when there are astral travel dreams, you know, you I, I've had many of them and, and other people think you can meet other astral beings or other dreamers that are actually also traveling on the astral level. And um, and then we go from that to lucid dreaming, next level. Okay, and so lucid dreaming, for those people who don't know, probably most people are, that's when you're having a dream, but during the dream, you realize you're dreaming. You're awake, you're aware, you're fully conscious. You're like, this is a dream, I know I'm dreaming, Okay, and when lucid dreaming happens, um, there's a lot of people that they're like, oh, you can take control of the dream, you can change things in the dream, and certainly you can. I've done that before. And uh, But there's other things that can happen with uh, lucid dreaming. I had one, you were talking about like shared dreams and everything like that. Real quick, won't go into a long dream. But I had a lucid dream, and I knew I was dreaming. And, but in this dream, I was like at this bar, this pub somewhere in Europe. And <clears throat> I'm sitting at the bar next to this lady. She makes this comment to me, and I'm like, oh, yeah, well, you know, you're just a dream character of mine. I'm dreaming right now. And this lady looked at me and said, you know what? I'm dreaming too. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, I'm having a lucid dream right now. And I was like, are you kidding me? She's like, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm a real person. I'm a real person. I'm having a lucid dream. And I'm like, okay, well, hey, let's exchange phone numbers, okay, and we'll call <laughs> each other in the morning, right, and and we'll see if it was like a shared lucid dream, like if you're a real person or I'm a real person. So we exchanged phone numbers, right? It was like write it down on the napkin, you know, sort of thing in the bar, and we exchanged phone numbers, okay? And I just tried my best to memorize this phone number, memorize this phone number. Okay, so the next morning, uh, I wake up, and I can only remember, you know, in, 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 instead of the 10-digit number, I can only remember nine digits. I, like, I was missing one digit. <laughs> and I, I, like, seriously got on the phone for, like, an hour, and I dired... I dialed like every single like last nine digit of the number 
you know, then I backed up a digit and I dialed every last nine digits of that. I, I was trying to call this girl. I'm like, oh, come on, man. How could I miss one digit, you know? But, um, and, and along those lines, I, I've had other lucid dreams where most of the time when I tell people in lucid dreams, I'm dreaming. I know I'm dreaming. Um, the dream, I call them dream characters. They'll tell me, so it's like an NPC, right? N a non-player character. So they'll tell me that they won't say anything. They just get this dumb look on their face. They're just like, their background, their non-player characters, they don't respond. This was the only person that was all like, oh, yeah, I'm dreaming too, you know? And so then <clears throat> beyond lucid dreaming, the next level is out-of-body experiences. And actually, I think the two are really connected. And I've had uh, multiple experiences where I've had lucid dreaming transition to out-of-body experiences. So what happened was, at, at the first part, I was lucid dreaming, okay? And so it's like a regular dream, and then I wake up in the dream. That makes it a lucid dream. And then, after I'm lucid dreaming, then I have an out-of-body experience. And then it's more like an actual uh, journey in ah, whether it's astral body, etheric body, uh, soul, etc., um, however you want to term it. And sometimes it's different things. And uh, so, you know, the lucid dreaming can be a gateway. It can be a transition to even higher levels of dreaming. So like I started out saying, there's lots of types of dreaming from information processing to symbolic to healing dreams to astral travel to lucid dreams to out-of-body experiences what it all generally is is consciousness and varying levels of consciousness and where you're going in that consciousness okay in Good. Terms okay of wait 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 stop 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 you're doing great but slow down i got some questions for you right we, we got some questions here so regarding all those dream states, so you, you verified, well, at least if you remembered the last digit, that, that, you, that maybe you are sharing uh, dream states with other individuals at the same time, okay? Uh, here's the crazy part. I'm going to throw this out. What if the phone number system in the dream time actually is without the digit? intentionally that last <laughs> maybe maybe that's but anyway just an idea but okay wait so so the next thing is do you think there's an administrator out there of a dream time somehow something like the sandman where uh, let's say that if uh, let's say both you and the individual you encountered in your dream you were both lucid dreamy meaning you could change the terms of the dream as you go right i, re I recognize i'm dreaming i don't want it to be daytime i want it to be nighttime and it's raining and i'm flying to the moon right so you change the parameters of your dream on the fly do you think there's an administrator out there that notices and is sort of in charge a gatekeeper so to speak of the dream world do you think that something like that exists or do you think it's all free form we can do whatever the hell we want well boy you brought up a couple of things well and you know so you said flying to the moon so maybe you were around on discord when i told my experience about flying to the moon and i um, you know, and, and so I had a lucid dream and I, I, to make it brief, I, in a lucid dream, I was flying to the moon and I basically got intercepted, uh, by some intelligent being and was like, Hey, you know, what are you doing out here? Let me, uh, and I said, Oh, I'm going to the moon. And they were like, Oh, well, I have somewhere much more interesting for you to go. And they took me on a, a journey. So are there, um, you know, those sorts of, uh, in ambassadors or different people out there in the dream world that are real beings that you know can see you or influence things well that was my experience yeah you know, i mean uh that's what happened to me um uh, and i also want to go to um you mentioned shared dreams and uh this is a really weird thing i had uh, because who can explain this <clears throat> shared dreams so if 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 you're dreaming and somebody else has the exact same dream. How do you explain that? Because it's, that means it's not taking place just in your mind. It's taking place in their mind too, or their consciousness, your consciousness. Well, that is sort of gives, uh, 
uh, credence to the fact that there's something like a dreamscape out there. There's a whole dream reality out there. And I, I actually had an experience with a shared dream and I'll skip all the details, but I, I had a girlfriend at the time. We didn't live together, but uh, she had spent the night and I had the most intense dream. I woke, woke up in the morning, sat straight up in my bed. And I was like, Oh my God, I had the most incredible dream. And she had sat up at exactly the same time. We both woke up because it was pretty intense what happened. And I was like, oh, I was sitting here and this was what was around. And then there was this. And I said like one phrase. Okay, that's all I said. She picked up from where I said and she said, yeah, that's what I saw. And then this happened and she described the next part. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. And then this happened and I described the next part. And it was like we went back and forth between us for like two minutes and described where we exactly had the same experience in dream time. And it it wasn't like a normal, regular dream. It was more like a out-of-body experience, interdimensional thing. And I... I'm I'm glad I only got a half a sentence out before she jumped in because I, I wouldn't have known it was a shared dream. But what she said confirmed and what I said confirmed for her. We had the same experience when we were unconscious slash dreaming. Uh, but I, I think there's a lot of levels to that. And I think that in terms of, um, you know, um, dream walking and the administrators and and real things going on out there and um are there beings that can influence and affect that i you know from my decades of experiences my answer is uh yeah but i don't want to sound like the guys on ancient astronauts you know <laughs> ancient astronaut theorists say yes no no i got you there i got you wait so Matt from Colorado says yes, but uh, you know, uh, I, I I think that uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes on, and really, what dreaming avails us of the opportunity uh, to do is to detach from our body, travel in consciousness, and travel to different realms of reality or dimensions or experiences and and some are very personal and they're symbolic and and um but some can be quite beyond that you know and so that's that's what's cool about dreaming and like i said it doesn't you don't have to uh go to hawaii and and pay three thousand dollars and take a workshop and and you don't have to you know take some drugs or or meditate for 30 years it's available to you every single night you know so uh, that's the cool things about dreams. It's it's like a built-in thing, you know, that we all have available to us that that helps us connect to something larger than um, the uh, physical third-dimensional human self. Okay, perfect. So, so I have another question here regarding that. You, you you said when you were flying to the moon, you had somebody stop you. What do you think? Do you think that that was like I described? Maybe there was some sort of a somebody watching you, and maybe the moon, the the dreamland moon was you know down for renovations, and they're like, no, no, you don't want to go there right now. We're working on that. How about over here? It's much more interesting. Do you think that was a coincidence, or do you think that uh, there's maybe an actual entity out there trying to steer dreams a particular way? Well, um, from my experience. And like I said, it's a it's a long experience. I did share it with people on the Discord channel. Um, uh, from my experience, um, what happened was I was lucid dreaming, and I was intercepted by this by this being. And to answer your question, it was absolutely, definitely a being. It was an entity. It was like either some kind of interdimensional being or some kind of extraterrestrial or whatever. And from what happened when he intercepted me or he or she, and the journey that went after that was completely different. That was not lucid dreaming anymore. Um, I, I was taken a place. I was shown things that are beyond my imagination. 
I couldn't have dreamt them up. They're nothing I would have seen on this world. Um, so that's this weird thing about that dream is this is like this crossover or intercept between the dream world or lucid dreaming and like perhaps interdimensional realities or other beings. So I don't think he was like sort of blocking me, but the weird thing is he saw me, right? Like, like I'm lucid dreaming, I'm flying, but somehow he could saw, he could see me. So what does that mean? Does that, you know, so like some kind of uh, other dimensional beings can see us as we're dreaming or as we're lucid dreaming? Does that mean that lucid dreams can be somewhat real? And I just have to say this before you cut me off. <clears throat> you brought this up. I actually had, you know, about a week ago, you mentioned this before. I had a dream with you in it. And I don't know if I had told you that. I had a dream with you. There was no Snickers bars involved, right? But then the, the, the question is, did you see me? Did you remember the dream? Maybe you had the dream, but you forgot the dream. You're not so good at remembering the dreams. But, you know, I, did, I, did I really see you in dream time? Or it's maybe just I call into this show so much I'm going to dream about you. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I, I don't remember I, I, you in the dream, but I don't remember my dreams at all. We're out of time. We're out of time. you got like 10 seconds. Please wrap it up. We're totally out of time. That's it, man. Just everybody, you know, keep listening uh, on the friends and or, or if you're listening on YouTube, YouTube, stick around for the third hour and uh, enjoyed it. Thanks. <laughs> hey, I got that. I got that. Uh, you're welcome to stay there. Just mute up, please. Just to hit the mute button if you know how to do it. And uh, we'll get back to you a little bit later. I appreciate it, man. That's Matt in Colorado. He's got a, a book called uh, this. It's called Escape the Matrix and Explore Reality, a Guide to Radical Transformation and Empowerment. Links in the description down below. There's still a coupon code there for free copies. So I'm not sure if they've been used up, but uh, go get a free copy if you can. Links in the description. Thanks for the call, Matt. I appreciate it very much. What we're talking about tonight is a dream walking. All right. This idea of the Sandman, maybe an administrator of dreams, including, well, well, let's say, uh, like Matt just described, maybe somebody stopped him and pulled him out of a dream into an, maybe an astral experience or something to that effect. Do you think there is or are entities out there that really are able to kind of cross uh, those those dimensions, the, the dream time world and into an astral travel or out-of-body experiences? And if so, what are they doing? Are they trying to, again, corral dreams in a particular way? Are they trying to pull us in or out, teach us something? Or do you think this is all just a bunch of hogwash? Uh, again, I, I, I said earlier on the news show today, and I, I do believe in, in uh, that a lot of things that people talk about are psychobabble B, psycho babble BS, right? And so I don't know. Like, I don't have those answers. Like Matt said, because he listens when I speak, I, I don't remember my dreams very well. I just don't personally. But there's people that remember every dream they have, and they keep those dream journals, and they do all the rest of that stuff. So, so I don't know. Like I said, regarding myself, uh, it's not necessarily about me because I'm not the best dreamer. Maybe I am, but I just don't remember it right so there's that but what about you what about your dreams number one remember we got some questions here do you think that well do we share dream spaces if you dream about me and vice versa will we were we actually in the same space number two are there administrators of this dream space people that can manipulate things and change things and like the sandman or like a dream walking in the marvel cinematic universe and of course on top of that how crazy does this get when you lucid dream and you change reality within a dream how much does it actually change love to hear your thoughts 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 this is troubled minds i'm michael strange don't go anywhere more dream walking with the sandman and the keepers of dreams when we return be right back
random, random, random images that they traverse neurons in the brain. So got, all right, so maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, and they also feel them planting or receiving memories or ideas or images. Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. What's going on, guys? It's Monday night, which is one of the nights we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. We do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. What are those things, you may ask? You may wonder. I'll have to sum up because there's way too much. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, And the general feeling that we live in the upside down. Tonight, we're talking about dream time. Is it possible that we share the same dream space? And if so, do you think there are entities that are administrators of the dreamland itself? We're talking about the Sandman. The uh, actual Netflix show is about to drop. Uh, The trailer just hit today, but it's about to drop the first week of August. And, of course, it gets complicated, of course. As always, everything is complicated. Because, well, this is troubled minds after all. We don't do uh, do the answers and the, the give you the answer and run the hell off. We would like to talk about these things in a, in a long form talk show. So as we do this, right, we're looking to hear your thoughts on all of the all of this stuff. Is there do we share dream space? Are there administrators, entities of such, or is this all just sort of locked into our head? We had Matt just call in and had a, a great rundown of all the different types of dreams and, and his experience, and they seem to be varied and all over the place. But it's um, basically a link to consciousness, is what he was describing, and I. Think I think that's fantastic. It's a good way to put it. Because, of course, talking in, in terms of consciousness, we all experience something a little bit different. So I think in terms of dreamland or dream time, I would expect that that's also going to be a little bit different. But just like reality here, like I always say, I'll handle my reality, you handle yours. But we still share realities, right? We're still in the same universe. So I wonder about dreams. Is there a dream universe where we all go and commingle and uh, hang out and have a good time in the dream dreamland? So love to hear your thoughts. We're streaming on Rockfin YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. Of course, we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. You can reach the show at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. We'll put you on the show. And uh, we're also talking about dream walking tonight from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So maybe uh, maybe Night Stalker's got some of that for us. We'll see what, he, what he's got. But uh, love to hear your thoughts again. 702-957-1037. Let's go to Derek in Massachusetts, the Night Stalker. Welcome to Trouble Minds, my friend. Are you there? Going on, brother. Great show tonight. Thank you very awesome much. At you, you uh, Rivers, James, uh, you guys are you guys are the ones doing this. I'm just uh, I'm just I'm just uh, the, the golem. I'm, I'm the puppet. <laughs> <laughs> no. You guys you're just, with the uh, great ideas. You just you just riding that riding that zeitgeist wave like uh, all the rest of us synchromystics here. Just uh, seeing what the uh, pop culture is putting down. We're just picking it back up. You know. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty obvious. You know, it's pretty like how can you how can you? Uh, I feel like. Doesn't it, don't, don't you feel kind of crazy that we're, we're seeing all this stuff and people people aren't really seeing the connections? Like it's very weird that all these things are kind of happening uh, all at once right now. You know, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. But I'm uh, extremely tired. I didn't really uh, sleep much today, so I'm really hitting my wall. I'm basically just uh, using maybe juice like my uh, like my coffee right now just to, to uh, stay awake. But really awesome show so far. Cool stuff. So you you probably have to walk me through these questions again a little bit to uh, to jog my jog my memory. But I have some dream takes. Uh, sure, want, sure. Where do you no, want to start here? Sure, no problem. I appreciate you uh, staying up late for us and uh, powering through the sleep there. Uh, so, so a couple things. What you just said is is tr- it's kind of true in that 
Now, I, I, I am noticing these things happening in that zeitgeist, in these news cycles, and how things are, seem to be connected. And uh, we're, as you know, we've been way ahead of a lot of this, even predicting some of the, some of the plot lines of these, these things coming yeah. out in these conversations. We've been doing it for months now, like six months, eight months, ten months, maybe longer than that. So it makes me wonder why I wanted to do this tonight and not wait till August is because maybe we're going to literally just kind of uh, – carve all this out and we can go back and listen to this and be like dude we predicted all of this but okay so the first question is this right it, it, do we share a dream space like if you you dreamt about me and vice versa uh were we in the same space or do we each have our own sort of a um, sectioned off individual dreamland okay um yeah I'll, I'll get to that in a second um just as we were saying that other, that other thing first uh as far as like the zeitgeist is concerned sure this this Sandman show is like highly anticipated. It's kind of uh, when when Netflix bought the rights to it. It's kind of it's, it was kind of like being being pegged as like Netflix's answer to Amazon buying the rights to Lord of the Rings or like the kind of Netflix's Game of Thrones attempt. Like it's they're it's they're putting all their chips in this basket. Like they're they're gonna market the hell out of this. They waited so long to give us the release date. Like they're making a this is gonna be a big big thing. So there's get ready for a lot of dream stuff in the in the mainstream there's gonna be a lot of like articles about different dream theories related to to sandman and this this type of thing and this is actually uh shout out to rivers that sandman is like her favorite book it's like her favorite graphic novel and like this is one of the first conversations we had like back in the day like three years ago or whatever when when they had first announced the they were going to make one like the uh, the show and at the time they were we were also like the movie world was theorizing with the doctor strange sequel is going to be dr strange that, that just came out and his like one of his main villains is uh, a character called nightmare who is essentially the same thing as sandman as morpheus he's like the embodiment of dreams or the in this case the embodiment of nightmares and kind of like one of these um super powerful cosmic beings that kind of has dominion like the prince of the dreamscape they call him or he's kind of has dominion over this dream realm and his his thing is like as long as he feeds off as long as somebody in the real world is dreaming then he has power if like the only way to beat him is to get everybody in the whole world to stop dreaming to like eliminate the dreamscape basically like he feeds off the power of dreams but like this was heavily anticipated to be to be the the villain so for three years at least three or at least two and a half years i've been anticipating like the collision of nightmare and dr strange 2 and then sandman coming out around the same time which didn't end up happening but uh it's a lot of stuff. I mean, they they did use the dream the, the dream stuff with the, with the dream walking and the uh, possession and that kind of things, which makes me think of uh, like channeling. And we talk about like the Council of Nine and contacting entities through channeling or through different like possession that way and stuff. And which gets into the question of uh, like Matt said a lot about the different layers of of dreaming and everything. And I agree with uh, with like basically everything he said. Um, but it, it, it's with with the layers of it with the with the murkiness of it like what is it actually doing um it makes me think of the question like what's the difference between dreaming and like a trance like state you know and how when people do get into channeling sessions or when are when when, when walk ins do happen and things like that they get put into trance like states so what is i'm not, i don't have the answer but what is the commonality between a trance state and a dream like state and is that what allows for uh possibly in the real world, but at least in Dr. Strange too, the idea of dream walking and possessing alternate realities, you know? Um, like I had anticipated, I anticipated Dr. Strange too. like Marvel. I feel like I'm talking too much about, about the, the biz, but like I didn't, I'd anticipated Spider-Man to be about exploring the multiverse, like the alternate realities of us, like alternate Spider-Mans and the alternate variant versions of different characters. But Doctor Strange 2, to dive into the multiverse, like how does the dream realm, how does the astral realm, how does the quantum realm, how do, how do all these other realms intersect within the multiverse? Um, which didn't really end up happening. But that's kind of my biggest question when it comes to dreaming. And I think kind of, um, like we talked about in the chat, and like James was saying in the chat, that kind of the dream realm could act as like a nexus realm. It's like our kind of personal gateway into all of these other realms. And I think in the Marvel comic continuity, that's kind of how it's described. It's like 
the, um, the dream realm and the astral realm are separate realms, and the ancestral plane are separate realms and the quantum plane, but the, with the dream realm is kind of this nexus region that we can access every night or anytime we want to that's bordering all these other realms and a way for you to dip in to these other regions and for other things to, to dip into you. So as far as the dream space being kind of segmented off or like guardians of the dreamscape, I think those guardians and barriers could be um, in place like like guardians of the threshold, like like guardians of the barrier for you to, um, or like cell membrane for you to not get out into the other realms, for you to not stumble into some alien realm, or to not stumble into some heavenly realm, or some hell realm, or, or you know what I mean? For you to, maintain, for you to stay in the dreamscape. Um, I'm rambling, but just to answer your question, the original question, do I think we share a dreamscape? Yes. I think part of it is like a clearing of the of our mental, of our cookies and stuff. It's, it is a processing of what's collected by our unconscious during the course of the day. But I believe because we have a collective consciousness during the day, the, the sensation, the morphic field, the sensation of you can feel when somebody's staring at you. There is a link between our minds in the waking world. I do believe that exists in the, in the dreaming world too. And I think... Um, in some cases, in a lot of cases, we actually go to a place where we, we share that experience. And uh, I'm rambling, so I have no, more, but... No, no you're perfect. Please you're per- save me. You're, yeah, I got yeah. you. I got you. You're perfect. I, it, it's funny. You, you, every time you're rambling, you're just spitting fire, my friend. I just don't want to talk too much, brother. I just... I just it's... it's uh, you're the star. I mean, I don't want to. Uh, no, I just no, feel it's, like I, it's, people it's, are like wait, wait, wait for me to stop talking. You know? No, it's totally cool. Totally cool. Yeah, you're spitting hot fire. So okay, so so uh, lots of lot like like Matt was saying too. You, you agree? It's co- it's complicated. It, is this dream dream space a, a place for us to be able to walk through and maybe access other places that aren't directly available for human beings? Right. And I like that. Yeah. That that actually fits in. You know me. I'm a big D and D fan. Always reading these D and D books on the weekends and whatnot. And uh, there, there's a there's a, a actual astral plane in D&D, right? And so that in particular terms, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody out there knows, but I think that's where people dream in the Dungeons and Dragons multiverse, the omniverse there, in that uh, people go to this space and from that space, you can access the other planes of existence. So it kind of fits with what you're saying, except that you separate them into two places, but in D&D, it's yeah. one place, but it, you know, who, who cares? Definitions are definitions. Now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. now regarding uh, the actual dream space and administrators we're, we're talking about the sandman right now do you know yeah. about the sandman have you read the sandman comic or any of that you familiar with yeah the I, I, it's there's like i think there's like 12 volumes i mean there, there's currently a big expanded sandman universe and like the, they're like in the current dc continuity they're, they're like on the if you go into a comic shop on wednesdays you'll find like three new uh spinoffs from sandman so the mythology is big right now and i, I haven't read the first volume since probably like one of my first comics i read so probably eight years ago at this point Okay. Um, so it's murky, but yeah, so I've read it. I've read it. Okay, it's very but, good. But it's there's very, a, very, very good. Yeah. Okay, but there's a group of like uh, entities that are sort of like gods of old, right? And in this Morpheus yeah, is one of those group, right? And he rules over yeah. the dream time, right? Like the like the endless, like these uh, kind of cosmic, um, kind of these cosmic forces, these like celestial celestial entities that are like manifestations of of cosmic forces basically so he's like the, which is similar to how it is in marvel like he's like just the manifestation like they call him dream himself and then like the dream realm is dreaming so he's kind of just the embodiment like the avatar of the dream space kind of um if that makes sense it's complicated it's a weird it's a weird a weird thing um but uh the idea of uh some type of like bureaucracy some type of group within the um in the dreamscape is super interesting. And I, I know James is going to have to call. This is like right up his alley for sure. He's been thinking about this. I know I feel like, uh, very recently. Um, but in the show, Loki, speaking of Marvel, they had, uh, which is like from last year or whatever, two years ago, how long has been, um, they have the time variance authority, which is like this bureaucracy that's in this like kind of pocket dimension that controls the timescape, like the, like, uh, the flow of time and like fixes anomalies within the time stream. And at one point during the show, um, Owen Wilson is like the, he, he plays a character ironically called Morpheus. Uh, oh no, Mobius, sorry, uh, Mobius. Um, but he references the dream department that like the dreams are controlled by another department and that, so that there's a time authority. And then apparently he just, we don't, we don't know for sure, but there is just another realm that controls the, 
the dream realm. So it's a cool idea, and it pops up in in sci-fi and fantasy a lot. This the the that this and honestly, it pops up a lot in mythology, like like the idea of the council of nine or just these elder councils or these like the idea that cosmology or just the other side is somehow um, organized like a corporation almost. It's a, uh, it's weird to think about. Um, yeah. That, yeah that, that Philip K. Dick thing too, like I was talking about earlier, they, it's called the adjustment uh, team. Yeah, the adjust, yeah. Yeah. The adjustment bureau is what they made the movie out of. And in the same instance, right. It's like time cops. You know, I hate to yeah. go back to that stupid Time Cop movie because I was a little bit goofball. But I mean, you know, <laughs> it, it each their own. But the thing is, right? If if there's in terms of let's say Philip K. Dick wrote that originally, and there's entities sort of managing the the flow of time to make sure things are running smoothly and there's no problems and the rest of this, right? And they make corrections as necessary. Yeah. It it seems to, seems let's say plausible anyway, that there's something out there, some entity, some celestial being, or even group council, like you described, maybe that are maybe administrating that dreamland, dream world, dream state. Yeah. It, se- it seems plausible to me. It seems fun anyway. And that, and so when I saw the, I mean, the, the Sandman that, I mean, you know, like it goes back to that old, you know, Mr. Sandman song from the fifties or whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I mean I, it's an old idea. Go ahead. Yeah. I, it almost reminds me of like um, the way the potentially our reality, like the simulation or like whatever world we're living in on when we're awake is kind of could, could potentially be governed or um, ran by like archons or some type of force that's kind of controlling re- like our reality. And just as above, so below, why wouldn't that exist in the other dimensions of reality? Like what, like some kind some type of dream archon, some type of, if, if there is like m- half of our, half of our life is spent, in the dream realm so half of our half of our if something is feeding off of our wake a waking energy and half of our time is spent dreaming you would imagine something if it, i don't know if it, if it created the dream realm if it invaded the dream realm but something's got to be feeding off of us when we're in the dream realm and that's kind of morpheus is is not the is not really villainous in sandman but uh, the character nightmare in, in marvel is a villain um and he just he feeds off like the the fear and that kind of stuff so i mean especially if the dream realm is more malleable than the waking reality and you can really create some type of nightmare escapes within the dreamscape to feed off of that type of fear uh, uh for sure that's, i think that's i think that's if that if that's possible then it's probably happening i just I mean, it's all maybe juice who knows yeah, but, hey, uh, I know we're running out of time. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. We're just drinking the maybe juice here, man. It's fine. Hey, yeah. we're just we're, it's, it's we're just drinking maybe it. juice on a Monday. Just a casual Monday uh, talking about uh the structure of the cosmos and the, the connection between the dream realms and the other astral plants. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, no big deal. No big deal. Um, um, but uh, I know we're just uh, we're out of time. But as far as like the are we do we share a dream the dreamscape when we when we go to sleep? Um, in co- one of my best friends in college. Um, this is when I was like, uh, I, I don't really remember my dreams as much these days. I, I blame like stress and the fact that I have a weird sleep schedule and stuff. But in college, I got like super, super into, into lucid dreaming. Um, and like towards the beginning of that, like one of my like, really close friends who was not in dreaming at all, uh, one of the funniest people I, I, I know was like, the most boring thing you can say is like you're talking about your dreams. He was like the talk, listen to the people here, like dream stories is like the least interesting thing you could possibly say. Like, and so I'm just, I'm saying that as just the idea of what the mainstream how the mainstream considers dreams. But to us, to me, dreams is dreams are unbelievably interesting. Super, super, super interesting. One of the most interesting things possible, but because the mainstream, I'm just using my friend as, as an example, doesn't really care about it that much. We don't talk about our dreams as a society, I don't, I don't wake up and share my dreams with everybody. Uh, and because of that, I probably don't remember, but for, for all, I, for all we know, every person that you interact with in your dream, they could be interact, like they could have the same memory. We just have no idea. We don't communicate it. And I can't, uh, Bailey mentioned it during the new show today, but, uh, the idea that like maybe this world is the dream world and the, and the dream world is more real than this. And like, there's a lot of ancient cultures that believe that. And I'm blanking on the name of it. Uh, the name of them, but I think it's a South American one of like one of the uh, like Aboriginal tribes that exists right now, and they use it as an example just because like it's 
is what we can observe as like how it must have been in ancient times. But they absolutely believe that the dream realm is the real world. So the first thing they do when they wake up, the entire tribe comes together and they sit around a circle and they just like share their dreams. Everybody goes around, and they share their dreams and they notice the commonalities. They notice the different symbols that they all have. They all share in their dreams. And they're, and because of that, they've come to the, real, the realization that the dreams, that that's where it's all happening. That's the real stuff, you know? Um, we're running out of time, so I'll stop. But I didn't. I didn't. Have, we didn't talk about Lovecraft. I got some Lovecraft takes. Maybe I'll call them later. We, we got I'll a couple minutes. We got a, we got a couple minutes, man. Go ahead. If you got Lovecraft, we got a couple minutes for that. Love to hear it. Um. Well, yeah. Let well, I me mean, just. Cthulhu is also called the Great Dreamer, and uh, shout out to Rivers. But uh, as a thought, it's called like uh, what is it? Not the Great Dreamer, but the the what the the, blind, the what Dreamer the, the Blind Dreamer the Blind Dreamer. Yeah. Yeah. So so Cthulhu is like sleeps like underneath the like outside of reality he's like the, like, the, like the one who slumbers and he communicates and influences via dreams like lovecraft is influ- like got the idea of the old one because he sees them in his dreams and stuff and then as a thought like we're all living in his dream is the idea is its dream like it's just he's the giant mind that is just the dream that we're all we're all existing in you know so that's a wild wild idea too at least like that i mean and just the idea of the old ones, different, different things influencing us via our dreams. If the dream realm is a nexus zone, a nexus reality to get to other realms, which I think it might be, like not just the astral plane, but potentially other just dimensions and or just the outside, the other side, then it's probably a way for other things on the other side to access us. So if something wants to manifest into the real world through the manifestation machine that is the human mind, the way to do it could be, could be the dreams. Um, Awesome show, Mike. Great stuff. I'll call in later if nobody calls in. But uh, banger, banger show. Awesome stuff. Appreciate it, brother. Inspired by you. Inspired by Rivers. Inspired by James and uh, all the rest of the team. I appreciate you guys. Shout out Rivers too. She really, she really loves uh, Sandman. So she's probably uh, enjoying the show right now. Which I know she is. Right on. Appreciate the phone call. Awesome show, Mike. You're the best, man. Get some rest. If you can uh, dip in later, I'd love to hear it. If not, uh, sleep up, my man. The the Night Stalker's got a rest, or the stuff doesn't get stalked. There you go. Derek in Massachusetts, the Night Stalker. Check him out. He's got a YouTube channel. Links in the description down below. Give him some love. Good friend of mine, good friend of the show. And just a very good human being. And uh, there you go, right? We're still talking about dreams tonight. We got Matt in California on deck. We're going to go to him in just a sec. I see you there, Matt. But what we're doing tonight is considering, well, do we share dream spaces? Not just dream spaces themselves. Well, and then are there administrators of this particular dream space meaning the sandman or meeting something else entities celestials or even azatoth the blind dreamer you tell me love to hear your thoughts at 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 this is troubled minds i'm michael strange don't go anywhere more after the break and matt in california be right back Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter, and we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Tonight, we're taking your phone calls as we discuss dream time. That's right, dream time. Do we share a dream space with each other? And number one, that's the first question. Second, do you think there are administrators, some sort of celestial beings or gatekeepers of dream time itself? Think maybe the Sandman, think maybe Nightmare from the Marvel Universe. Who knows what's going on out there? Love to hear your thoughts on this. And is there more to it than just a simple dream? Love to hear you what you think. 702 957 1037. That's 702 957 1037. And we'll put you on the show as simple as that. Let's go to Matt in California. What's up, Matt? Test one, two. Are you there? Hey, Mike. How's it going? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Welcome to Troubled Minds. Can you hear me good? Loud and clear. Go right ahead. What are your thoughts? I'm, I'm yeah. sure you know, you know a thing or two about dreams. Uh, if uh, James is a paranormal expert of Troubled Minds, uh, I, I got to say that Matt's like the, uh, the, the shaman. He's like the Troubled Mind shaman. What's up, Matt? Tell us about dreams, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's important that we talk about dreams and um, everybody dreams. So it's important to talk about it. I think uh, we were talking about that earlier that 
the tribe that they wake up and they sit around the breakfast table and they share their dreams. Uh, you know, we don't do that anymore. And I think it's kind of cool. We can find out a lot about each other and learn about ourselves by talking about our dreams. So I'm glad you're doing it. I want to talk about um, psychic dreamwalking. So I read this book called Psychic Dreamwalking by Michelle Ballinger. And it teaches you about psychic dreamwalking and pretty much what that is. Okay, so wait, let's start. M- my personal belief is that, like, my phys- okay, I'm awake now, my physical body. When I fall asleep, my physical body falls asleep and my astral body wakes up in the astral realm and does things there. And that's why, have you ever, like, woke up and you're more tired? That's because you're busy in your dreams. Have you ever had that? <laughs> yeah, uh, I must be, a, like, a massive dreamer because I wake up tired every day, man. I'm one of those guys where I'm just like, uh, again. <laughs> I must be lifting, I don't know, multiverses on my shoulders in my dreams, bro, because I'm tired every day. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I believe. And so in this book, it talks about, um, so first you got to learn how to lucid dream. And then um, you could, what you do, so uh, one of the ways, and it actually has, petitions to what they call the they call the dream king and i'm looking it up and actually the dream king does have a name and his name is morpheus uh, i see the um the matrix reference there it's pretty cool but uh, his name is morpheus and we just call him the king of dreams so you can petition the king of dreams you could ask like chanting over and over you know, king of dreams please grant me you know, i want to have a um, lucid dream or i want to remember a dream or remember somebody in a dream and you can write it down on a piece of paper, say, you know, King of dreams, I wish to remember my dreams and then put it under your pillow. And so uh, in this book, they talk about being able to lucid dream, create your dreamscape. So you create how, you know, whatever you want. And then, and if the other person is asleep, so you get a partner and you plan it. So, you have to have the other person has to be asleep at the same time as you. So like for me and you it'll work, but then there's like time zones. Like if that person's on the other, you know, on the East coast, it'll be a different time for them when they're asleep. So if you're both asleep at the same time, you have to plan it out. And then you pull that person from their dreams into your dream world. And then you have like a shared dream experience. And so I had a buddy, he, I was talking to about it and he was like, interested. So I let him borrow the book. And we planned it out. Hey, I'm going to be asleep at midnight. And he's like, me too. Okay. Like around two o'clock is when you'll be like, all right, I'm asleep. And so I was like, okay. So I did all my things. I, you know, I wrote a petition to the King of dreams, put crystals under my bed, under my pillow, you know, incense, all that stuff. And he did as well. He did his, you know, his version of what he wanted to do. And I uh, had a dream. And that night I had a dream that was in this, um, kind of a temple, like a church setting. And there's like candles, tea light candles all over the, the wall. So it was dimly lit with tea light candles all over the wall. And me and my friend were having a conversation. We were sitting on a table and we we're eating and drinking and having a good time. And the next day I saw him and he, he was like, dude, I had a dream about you. I was like, really? What was it about? And he said that in his dream, we were in like a, like a temple, like a, like underground pyramid. And there was torches on the wall like lit torches like indiana jones style where you walk with the lit torch and so that was his dream and i can't help but notice the similarities even though it wasn't the exact same thing i had candles he had torches it was the fire is the connection you know so like we had the same dream but we we like remember it differently if that makes sense yeah yeah so it almost seemed like Maybe you guys didn't actually meet, but maybe at the end of like the underground caverns, maybe they connected. Maybe it was like the the dream labyrinth and you're supposed to like combat the Minotaur and find each other. That's pretty wild, man. Yeah. And then the second time we did it in my dream, I had a dream where I was in like London and it had like the cobblestone, like the cobblestone walkways and there was fog and I was on a bridge and there's like big bin in the background. And then, um, the same thing, you know, I asked him, he, he's like, Hey, I had a dream about you. But in his dream, he said that, um, he just remembered that everywhere he walked, he said the ground was all cracked. Like there was cracks in the ground. And in my dream, I was on a cobblestone walkway in London. So it was like, like I said, it wasn't the same exact dream, but we were having like similar dreams together. 
kind of weird. Yeah, that's weird. So I wonder, okay, now here's the thing, right? So if you can do this and it's practice and there's like similar themes in your dreams currently, I wonder if instead uh, with a little bit of practice, you guys would actually end up being maybe exactly in the same space, right? So it seems like we got a little bit of similarity, but if you continue practicing this, you've only done this a couple, three times now, you said? Yeah, those the only two experiences I had was psychic dream walking. But, oh. I, but I, I, you're on something. It is what, what we always say. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? It is something that, it's the same thing with lucid dreaming. You know, you can't just, you have to practice it, do it more and more, get better at it. That makes sense. Okay. And so, so what are the limits to this? So if, uh, so we do share these dream spaces, how does that work with lucid dreaming? So let's say you go, you guys both figure out how to do this and you can literally meet up and slap hands in the dream and be like, Whoa, bro, we did it. Does that mean one of you could like lucid dream and change the realities of the dream for both people? How would, how do you think would that would work? Uh, I, I don't know. Cause the way that I was doing it was I was lucid dreaming. Like I was creating the dream. Like I was lucid dreaming and then I like, I like in my lucid dream, I had it all set up and then I like somehow like a portal kind of opens up in my dream and I see him sleeping in his bed and I reach in and grab him and I pulled him into my dream. And that's how we shared the dream together. Okay. So, so you did you, so you kind of are making this happen in some, some capacity with that, that sort of lucid dream yourself. That's pretty nuts. Yeah. So I don't know if he would have any control over it or if it would, if it was all my, if it would be all my dream. I don't know. Okay. So that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Same here. I like, that's one of those ones where I'm like, I I wish I could even remember mine to begin with. Right. So, so, okay. Now Morpheus, the interesting part about Morpheus and the, 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 the Greek God of dreams and sleep. Right. So not only is Morpheus, he's the same guy the same title in this DC um, thing that's about to hit Netflix in, in August. His name is Morpheus, but he's known as Dream or, of course, the Sandman. Now, you think it's the same thing? And let's say, does the King of Dreams, Morpheus in this case, or the Sandman, they are the, the king of the dominion of dreams, but do they affect it? Do you think they care as an entity? Uh, what do you think their role is uh, regarding us as mere mortals? Um, that's a good question. I think they're kind of like the god of that realm, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think they can interact, and I think that they can um, come through to us. And like I said, just just asking, just asking to the king of dreams. It's like a, he's like a higher power, is what it is. So you're you're like asking a higher power for help. That's all it is to remember your dreams. And so he like comes through, and it's kind of like the same man. He comes, and then he helps you have a good sleep, and and you can ask him to help you remember a lucid dream or remember your dreams or remember people in your dreams. Cause I have like, I have dreams where sometimes it's like a person I know, like I know that person and it is that person. But then I also have dreams where like, it's a person that I think I know or reminds me of somebody, but it's like an NPC. Yeah. Like they're not there. Like they're there, but it's yeah. not them. It's like sort of a caricature of themselves, but it's not them. Right. Sort of a placeholder yeah. in dream time. Yeah. That's wild that, so you, you can kind of manifest with our own imagination and memory of people, a caricature of a person, but it's not really that person. But interestingly, like Matt in Colorado said, uh, he, he had a dream where he said, you guys are all NPCs anyway. And somebody was like, Nope, I'm here dreaming too. You ever had something <laughs> similar to that happen? That's pretty wild. No, that is, that is pretty wild. So, but that's kind of what I was saying. Maybe, maybe the dream world, the astral realm is just a really big and that, that's why we're not bumping into each other at night. Or maybe, maybe there's like different layers to it, like different, you know, um, ups and downs. And it's not, it's not like the physical world where it's, you know, the earth and the sun and the moon. It's kind of a, a whole, it's like a whole, um, it, it's a whole other world, you know, a whole different world. A, a dream world, a whole, it's like an alien planet, basically. So there could be different planets, different sizes of planets, different, all kinds of different ways you can go. So we could be dreaming next to each other and we're just too far apart. 
Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, because I mean, how many billions of humans are there? So it makes sense that the, the dream realm would have to be huge, especially since like you, you got to figure about half the world's probably asleep all the time, right? This half right. to sleep and that half to sleep, and you know the sun goes around and the rest of that. Or so I uh, wait. We go around the sun anyway. Uh, <laughs> pardon, pardon my uh, my lack of knowledge in astronomy. But okay, but and then you got other the, naps. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Exactly. And the naps and everything. So there's always like a huge chunk of people sleeping. So uh, imagine if you kept everybody awake for like 48 hours, let's say, do you think the dream realm would, would collapse? Ah. I'll keep everybody awake. Yeah. For like 24 hours. If you did like a 24 hour or 48 hour, nobody sleeps. Would, would uh, the dream realm collapse? Or do you think the king of dreams would keep it open? Just drinking some maybe juice here, having some fun <laughs> thoughts. No, I think it, I think it's just a natural ability all humans have. It's, you know, we, we go to sleep, our astral body wakes up and does work. Just like we do work here, you know, there's a whole life on that side of the, of the, of the astral realm. Gotcha. We just only remember, we just only remember like a bit, like bits and pieces of it. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. it's It's there for a reason. We're supposed to learn from it. And so that's the whole point of all this talking about dreams is, I want to talk about my dreams. I want you guys to talk about your dreams. I want to learn and, and just talk about it. Cause just talking about it, it makes your subconscious start, start wandering and thinking about it, you know? Yeah, totally. And I think that's the weird part is when you start uh, considering that if uh, we, maybe, maybe we are supposed to uh, acknowledge each other in those dreams, at least maybe in a waking state and, and do share those ideas. Maybe we had a dream, you and I together, even let's say we just kind of crossed paths for like five minutes and said, Oh, Hey, what's up, Matt? What's up, Mike? And we kept on rolling and doing our, you know, flying to the moon or whatever, right? Whatever the hell we were doing in our crazy ass dreams. But, uh, what if we were supposed to remember that exchange and like us talking about it, sort of jog the memory of the experience and we learn something that we may have forgot. I think, I think it's a great point you make that we should uh, share this type of stuff with our friends, with people close to us, because you never know what type of things we may sort of uh, draw out from each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's kind of how it works too. How I remember dreams is that I'll remember like a little piece. Like I'll just remember I was in the car and that's it. And then like, if I start thinking about it, I could like play and pause it and rewind it in my mind. And then next thing I know, okay, I was in the car and then I'll remember the next part of my dream. And then I'll remember the next part of my dream and I'll just kind of go, it'll go from there and I'll end up remembering, you know, how long the dream is just by just pieces, bits, by bit and bits just by thinking about it. Yeah. yeah and the other weird thing about, go ahead, go ahead. about time is with time in the dream world is different. So, you know, you can have a, an hour long dream, but it, what is it in real life? It's only like, it might just be like a spark in your, um, the electrolytes in your, the electric in your brain, a half a second in the real world, but it could be like a two hour dream. Right. Or, or like a two week dream, even like it, it could be, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the crazy part. Like it, like the time, the time space is not congruent with like regular time here. It's a uh, kind of outside the bounds of that space time, which I love. That's a great idea. Uh, what else you got for us, my friend? Um, if I have time, I have one more story. I'll tell real quick. a shared dream. Sure. I had, a, um, there's this, this girl I knew and she passed away like really suddenly. I didn't get to say goodbye. And, um, when she, when she passed away, for three nights after she died, um, I had the same reoccurring dream with her in it. And all the dreams I was, it was like, um, you know, like Peter Pan and Wendy, when they hold hands, that's how the pixie dust, now they can fly. So I can only fly if I was holding her hand. And so I was holding her hand and we were flying around and we were just flying around over the oceans, over the desert. And we were flying around. And then the second night, we were flying, we went out into the stars, out into the cosmos, around nebulas and through the, through the galaxies. And um, and the last night we were flying around. And each time we were flying and we would get lower and lower and lower and we were flying like, over the water and we were like really close to the water. And I look over at her and her eyes are closed. And I'm like, Katie, wake up. And she'd wake up and we'd be able to fly. But then we'd get lower and lower again. And then I'd look over, she, she had her eyes closed. So I was trying to wake her up and she wouldn't wake up and we crash into the ground. And that's when I would wake up, my alarm clock would go off. And that same thing happened all three times. That's pretty wild. So, so, yeah. so 
Interesting. It's almost like uh, like maybe she was asking right to, to, to help bring her back or something. That's that's wild, man. And uh, like I think she was just showing me. She was showing me what's there, like that there's more out there, and that she's okay. Okay, right on, right on. That's a that's a fantastic story and and interesting, right? That's a, that's a good thing. That's there's a lot of people that have dreams about people that have just passed like that, and it is. It, it makes you wonder. Like Ronald said in the chat, and not too long ago, over on Rockfin, he said something to the effect of, uh, "I believe dreams can be an avenue for loved ones who have passed on to communicate with us." And there you go. There's a there's a perfect example of what he was describing. Fantastic stuff, Matt. I appreciate you very much. Uh, anything else you got for us tonight? Um, no, I'm going to go. Um, I might call back with a quote at the end, but or put it in the chat, but I have a quote. So um, thank you, guys. Um, just remember your dreams. Talk about them with people. And let's just um, let's just talk about our dreams and, and not, you know, who cares? You know, we're not like judging anybody. Yeah, not 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 be weird that the 1987 Dallas Cowboys <laughs> cheerleader squad ends up in my dream all the time. Uh, yeah, that's not yeah. weird. That's no way. <laughs> You're the best, man. Thanks for the call. Right, Always a pleasure. Guys. Matt in California, good friend Thanks, of mine. Uh, say hi to Lacey for me, okay? Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is the thing, okay. right? Regarding dreams, dreamwalking, and Sandman, the the administrator of dreams. Uh, again, Morpheus as the the Greek god of dreams and sleep. Is this is this real? Uh, what do you think this is? And uh, we're still talking about this. Seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. That's seven zero two. Nine five seven one zero three seven. Let's go to uh, James in Michigan. Salcedo Paranormal. Are you there? Test one two. What's up, brother? I'm here. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, man. Loud and clear. Uh, welcome to Troubled Minds. Uh, what do you think, man? Uh, what do you dream about, James? And what is your what's your take here? I have way too many dreams that are weird to get into. Um, I do have two family members. I won't say which ones exactly. That I had a shared dream, though. I can talk about it real quick. I'm, I'm definitely want to stay after the break if it's okay, because I have kind of a lot tonight. Yeah, definitely. Um, so to let you know, we have about five and a half minutes. We'll, then we'll dip off, take, get off the radio, and then uh, you can continue. Okay. Yeah, and, and normally I don't like to say that, but this time it's just I don't know. It's funny how things happen this way. No, you're cool. But, I wasn't. Um, gonna, I wasn't going to run you off anyway. We got plenty of time. Go ahead, my man. Okay. Okay. So. Um, yeah, so these two family members I have, they live, lived in the same house for a while. And they they came down basically one morning after, you know, they, they sleep at night like a lot of people do. Um, it's, it's a weird thing. I don't know how people do it, but they do it. Um, but uh, so they came down and they, everyone was getting ready and having breakfast and everything. And the one said, I had a weird dream last night that uh, there was we were all in the car and we were trying to get get somewhere and there was these military blockades ahead of us and traffic was slowing down we were going to turn around and we were hearing like explosions and things and beyond this this barrier and they got they got the weird feeling like it was not the usual kind of military stuff it was like something to do with alien something to do with ufo kind of stuff and um, I don't remember if they saw anything in the sky, but just, you know, that kind of vibe. And um, so they were telling their, their other family, family members about this dream. And they said that, you know, the dream went on for a while, and then there was, um, then it just stopped for them. Well, someone else at the same, same table, the dining room table, said, that's funny, I had a similar dream. And, uh, but it went on after where it ended for you, because... There were, we had a bump in the road, or something hit us, and you hit your head on the on the car, inside of the car. And <laughs> no, so, not like, yes. like 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 the like the jar, like the clunk, yes. woke them up out of like this. But whoa, yes. come on, that's crazy, and, James. <laughs> that's nuts. And these are these are from my my father's side of the family, who has has a history going a ways back of. Just having weird sensitivities to weird things, and yeah, they both described it, and it was the same same dream. Only it went on for a little bit longer for the one than it did for the other because of events that happened in that dream <laughs> that, that that they remembered together. That's that's whoa. Uh, okay, so interestingly, so I wonder in in uh, Inception, right? You got I don't know if you've seen that, but they, there's like this layers and layers and layers of dreams, and they they kind of take them down to these dream states, and they call that the kick. 
right? That actually brings you, wakes you up out of one dream layer and brings you back. And they have to have a kick on each level to bring you back up to the top, right? And so uh, there you go. That's a uh, straight out of Inception right there. The kick was the clunk, <laughs> hit your head, and you woke up from the dream. That's that's absolutely wild. Boom. I, I've never had a shared dream, James. Never had a shared dream. Uh, go ahead. What else you got? No, and I haven't either, which is really kind of odd when you think of all the strange dreams I've had. I've had out-of-body experiences. I've had, I've had, uh, you know, I don't know, even know, glimpses into alternate parallel universes. I've, I've had a lot of strange things happen in dreams. And that's like the one area where I haven't had that happen, at least as of yet. Um, unless you want to count that one dream I had where I was at my cousin's old house. They don't, the family doesn't own it anymore. And it was an out-of-body experience, but <laughs> I was I had fallen asleep in my chair listening to, to this show. And uh, I was hearing the show in this weird experience. So... <laughs> That, uh, you, you took yeah. you took troubled minds with you to the dream world. <laughs> I love it. I did somehow. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, got yeah. like a, a minute left for you. So uh, if you got something to wrap up, and then we'll uh, click off the radio and get right back to you. Yeah. So just uh, real quick, I, I do think that all these different the, all these different types or kinds of experiences in or realms can be connected. I don't know if they always are or if we have to do something or if there is, if it's part of us that, that makes these connections at times. Maybe something like portals in a way. Um, but I do think they're all out there and uh, I think this is an amazing topic. I have some synchronicities I'll get into um, after we get back from the break. Nice. Sounds good. Uh, James here, a good friend of mine. He's got a podcast called Salcedo Paranormal. Check it out. Uh, links in the description down below. He does paranormal stuff five nights a week. He does stories. He does paranormal news, does book reviews, including Stephen King and Lovecraft and all kinds of other stuff. Go say hi to James. Good dude, good friend of mine. And uh, like I always say about all these folks, uh, fine human beings. You're the best, James. Appreciate you very much. Uh, hang tight. We'll get right back to you. Going to smash the music and get off the radio here and uh, do our thing. As you know, right, uh, we, we do this uh, four night four night four a week, Monday through Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Go for two hours on Fringe. If you're listening to us on the Fringe FM, stay tuned for Joe Roop lighting the void. If you're listening to us on any other platform, including the podcast feed, stay tuned for a third hour of Troubled Minds. And as you know, this is the question show, not the answer show. I'm not trying to derive any bit of truth here. Truth is a slippery fish. It's for you to decide, not for me. And uh, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. As we end, it goes exactly like this. Be sure... Be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. Oops, unmute myself. That was not good. All right, look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to skip the break. We got James. We cut him off in the middle of the story. He had some thoughts. We're going straight back to James Salcedo of Salcedo Paranormal. We'll take the break after him. We got Jennifer on the line as well. And then we got Matt in Colorado we can get back to. And, of course, your calls as well, 702-957-1037. We're talking about the dream realm. Is this a space we share? Is it uh, something where uh, maybe as suggested that the, the dream realm, like James said, is so large that maybe we don't just kind of run into each other like Matt said as well? Maybe it's big. Maybe this place is big. And that's why we're not always just kind of running into each other in the same space because it's infinite space. Who knows, right? Well, that's what we're talking about tonight. And of course, the other question. So first, do we share Do we share the dream realm together? Number one. Number two is, uh, is there an administrator of the dream realm like Morpheus or the Sandman, also known as the Sandman, which inadvertently or maybe advertently, I know that's not a word, is, uh, well, a synchronicity about uh, not just the multiverse of madness and the dream walking, which we'll get to in a little bit, but also that uh, this we have like in the zeitgeist these these 
ideas of dreamscapes and dream walking and it, it just seems to be i don't know it seems like the, the things follow a pattern and uh, as night stalker always says there's a reason for these things it's not necessarily a big coincidence it's uh they, there's something out there that uh maybe something is trying to tap into or maybe we're tapping into it ourselves so i saw that today on the news and thought okay well the sandman we got dr- the, the dream walking from uh from the marvel universe something seems amiss here so let's talk about this seems like something wants us to talk about it so let's talk about it so if you want to be part of the show i'd love to hear your thoughts on dreams the dream space are there administrators of dreams including the dream police do you think that exists 702-957-1037 let's get back to james james in michigan welcome back my friend thanks for being patient go right ahead oh no problem um yeah i so the other thing that was happening between yesterday and today uh i'm getting the echo real quick go ahead i'll fix okay. it I fix it. Okay. All right. And um, is that um, because you mentioned this in the chat, like you said, in the new show, but also in it, um, just direct messages earlier before the show. And uh, we were talking about it. And Rivers, I guess I had mentioned that um, to someone that I've been reading, listening to Lovecraft uh, short stories, novels and short stories. And she mentioned that. And and she asked if there's any connections to this topic, and at first I was literally typing, no, I don't think so, and then I started thinking about it. And I was like, wait. So I went back and I checked. And the last two stories I read, the second to the last one was called Azathoth. That was the one that I, the one of the two that I read. And then the other one after that was, I don't know, um, Beyond the Wall of Sleep, I think it was. Um, so both basically t- touching on this very topic that I listened to yesterday. I did not tell anyone which one, which ones I was listening to. <laughs> so there it is, right? There it is. And as, as a Toth, interestingly, is uh, they they could the, again the the blind idiot god. There's a whole bunch of names, aka names here. The blind idiot god, nuclear chaos, the daemon sultan, abyssal idiot, the lord of all. Uh, and and they say that Azatoth himself is a sentient black hole, and everything that exists, ourselves included, is just the giant dream of the old one, Azatoth. And so, well, hmm. <laughs> you, t- you tell me uh, the blind dreamer, as it were. A uh, lot of nicknames, a lot of uh, great stuff. Links in the description down below if you want to check out the Lovecraft mythos regarding this. But, okay, so you heard the story. I haven't actually read this particular story myself. Do you remember any details regarding the this gigantic, just g- g- huge, I mean, beyond belief? What do you know about Azatoth, James? Not much. That's the other thing about that story is it was actually, it was supposed to be a novel, but it was never finished. Um, so all that exists is this really short fragment. It was like two minutes long in audio format. And um, so I don't know a lot about it. I only listened to the, the what that file was, but I guess there's been discussion after the fact of what it was supposed to be. You know, Lovecraft scholars and all that have found notes and stuff. So I don't know all of that part of it. But the story was really just about this this guy who was just musing on how in modern times the belief in magic and dreams and the paranormal has decreased so much. And yet he's in his dreams he's he's had dreams and he's he's seen you know unrealistic or, or fantastic worlds and cities and and just things like that. And so that was that story, you know, and and so I was just really surprised that that came up in that. Um, so that was that one. Then the other one, the, uh, Beyond the Wall of Sleep, that one was about um, a doctor or a psychiatrist in a in a um, in a mental uh, in the hospital. I'm not sure what the exact correct word is for it, but um, who was studying a patient there who was having these dreams where he was actually talking about them out loud as he was having them and then as he was waking up and even acting out and like moving in his sleep and basically saying he was he had to find this other entity in these dreams that was basically bad and I don't think it I don't think he named it in that or in that story but um 
but so that's how that story goes. And it, in in the end, spoiler on a hundred year old story, if it's okay with everyone. Um, <laughs> Ray. <laughs> yeah. So, but in the end of the story, it happens where this entity comes through as this man is dying, and goes into all these details about how, you know. I'm not as bad as what this this person thought. It was just he he was afraid because I'm this otherworldly being and you know all this stuff and it was just and then of course that you know the, this being said I I mean you all here no harm we're not supposed to interact with each other your world and my world this just sometimes happens and then he leaves the the man's body as the man is basically just dies. So again, going back to that whole idea of possession, the whole possession thing, um, it was just uh, really ironic that, that I happened to listen to those stories yesterday and had no idea what you were planning for today. And I know you probably didn't know for sure either. No, I had no idea till like a couple point. hours ago, till the news show. Yeah, it's so it's so strange how this happens, right? And within this group too, like like uh, the, the 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 friends of troubled minds were always kicking around show ideas and uh, thoughts on different things. And uh, you know, many times like uh, we do shows on things we don't speak of that kind of came up that spur of the moment for me, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, let's do this. And everybody's like, something like you just did. You're like, uh, literally, I just heard about Azatoth yesterday, like in the the dream, like a particular dream state of uh hp lovecraft and that other story you know what's pretty nuts about that story you just said what was i called the wall of dreams or the wall beyond the wall beyond sleep i can look it up real quick but yeah that's okay we'll we'll go with that you talk real quick that's cool we'll go with that the wall beyond sleep now basically it seems like a dueling thing between like a consciousness and like a dream villain right that was trying to come through into the real world maybe even by the individual passing away something like this right that's what i got check this out this is from Rivers. Rivers sent this to me before the show as well. And this is why this is why I tell you guys, join the Discord, because if you guys have ideas about uh, stories or, um, let's say, things that maybe uh, relate to other ideas, uh, throw them in the Discord, because they'll end up on the show. Uh, shout out to Rivers, good friend of ours. Uh, shared this, uh, pep- paprika or paprika i don't know how to say this so the actual uh, paprika is the spice but this is a film from 2006 it's an anime listen to this the story is about a battle between a dream terrorist who steals a device that allows others to share their dreams and causes nightmares for people and a research psychologist who enters the dream world and changes into paprika a dream detective to investigate the cases and that's almost exactly like what james was describing there like his he's he's sort of uh, like 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 countering this dream villain i mean (laughs) like what in the world is going on right now this is nuts never heard of this stuff and uh it's pretty pretty strange how all this stuff can kind of like come together and like you snap your fingers and everybody's like boom look at all this stuff that kind of fits it's nuts yeah, Beyond the Wall of Sleep. That's the actual title. Beyond the Wall of Sleep. I love it. I love it. Uh, fantastic, James. Always great stuff. Uh, real quick, uh, Kay over on uh, Rockfin says, Dreams could be a be parallel lifetime bleed through. Uh, take on that, and plus whatever else you got, my friend. Well, as I've said in other shows before, I've had dreams of parallel lives. One where I was with my mom and former stepdad, and my half sister, only in that world, we were all still living in the same house, which we don't. Then they were the my mom and that and that that um, you know for my former stepdad. They were still together, which they're not. And they had not one daughter in that in that world, but they had three that all looked similar but were different. They did not have three daughters here. They had one. So I think that happens. Um, so and so there's yeah there's a response to that the other thing it's funny Elton tonight because i also um the news show made me think of a marvel comics event an x-men comics event and it was really only like a two issue story but it's it's had um lasting effects on on that the x-men universe of comics for ever since then and it's called days of future past so I can just describe that one real quick if you want. Yeah, do it. I got it. I'll pull it up and put it on the screen. Okay. So th- this covers the X-Men, the uh, mutants. And, um, and, of course, it goes back to the whole um, 
idea of humans having problems with mutants, you know, um, thinking of them as not human. And so they developed these machines, these, um, that they're called sentinels, that were designed to basically keep the mutant population in check and, 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 or, and or worse, depending on who was in control of them at any given time. And so the story starts out with this vision of this future version of Earth where the Sentinels have taken over. And the cover uh, of that issue, it's basically a sheet that shows all these different faces of all the different, a lot of the different X-Men. And the words over their faces are either slain or apprehended for a lot of them. And so at this point in the story, the few X-Men that are left, um, at least in this area, they get together and they use, I forget if it was technology or some kind of just mind powers, I think it was mind powers, um, to send the spirit or the, the consciousness of an older Kitty Pride, Shadow Cat, back to her younger self. And basically these two versions of the same person switch bodies for a time. So that the older version can inhabit her younger self's body to send a message to the X-Men, hey, we have to be real careful here and, and stop whatever um, this other the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants is going to do because if we don't, the, the, this is the future that you're gonna, we're going to find ourselves in someday. And and so this whole story is about you know about that that struggle between these two teams while also showing basically the end of the X-Men in this alternate future as they're kind of basically taken down one by one and or driven insane by the various events going on there yeah, which so, which, which actually fits yeah. here because for a number of reasons we're about to get into uh, the Marvel uh, MCU dream walking. Uh, I'll try not I'll try not to be too heavy on the spoilers because I know everybody hasn't seen it yet. But there's a particular thing that happened in uh, uh, the Doctor Strange multiverse of madness called dream walking. So we'll talk about exactly what that is without spoiling the movie. I'm, I'm going to try try not to get into that because you guys should really watch that if you haven't seen it. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, the re- the reviews kind of bombed it a little bit. Uh, less than I thought it was. I, I said it's all eight and a half, maybe nine out of ten, in my opinion. I thought it was very good. There was a lot of things in there that I think were uh, very, very synchro with a lot of stuff we talk about and even that we predicted. Like uh, Rob, uh, what's up, Moon Monk out there, came back from it and he's like, holy crap, you guys. Like It seemed like like, like they've been spying on us for six months and made a movie about all the things we, we always talk about. And that's exactly how it seemed to me as well. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> this is all like kind of spot on. So I'll try not to spoil that we'll just get to uh, some of the ex- exact uh, dream walking with the marvel cinematic universe but uh, there's a lot to this uh, i appreciate you very much james what else you got my friend i believe that is basically it i want to let everyone else get on here as well so uh thank you again for taking my call and i will i'll be here listening and and we'll talk again near the end if we have time appreciate it my friend uh, james here uh, you guys know who he is at salcedo paranormal check it out links in the description down below go give him a follow go hang out when he's doing his live streams uh 5 p.m pacific 8 p.m eastern and uh you can hear some paranormal stories live all right thanks james appreciate it uh, jennifer hang tight gonna take just a quick break just smash it real fast for like 30 seconds and then we're gonna get back to you and we got a phone call as well 702-957-1037 dream walking with the sandman and the keepers of dreams what does this mean do you think that we should a communal dream space and beyond that it, are there out there an administrator of dreams including morpheus the greek god of sleep and dreams itself so there you go be right back don't go anywhere trouble minds coming up about 30 seconds gonna just step away grab some more maybe juice and uh be right back with jennifer in missouri hang tight be right back 30 seconds this 30 seconds my- there we go music be right back Let's do it. Who's ready? I'm ready. I'm ready if you're ready. Let's kill the music. 702-957-1037, troubleminds.org. Click the Discord link and we'll put you on the show. Just like this. Jennifer in Missouri, are you there? Test one, two. Thanks for being patient. 
How are you? Hello. Good evening. What's happening? Not much. I, mean, I have like a like sinus cold thing, so you have to excuse me. But no, I I love Neil Gaiman, and began listening to him and like well reading all of his novels and stuff, and then like American Gods and everything years and years and years ago, like in the two thousand like early two thousands. And then the Sandman graphic novels were I mean the Sandman comics themselves, there were so many, there were like like tons of them. I can't remember the exactly just a a crazy amount. But the Sandman mythos <clears throat> from Neil Gaiman that he created is just incredible. And when you think about just all the beings and and that they all the beings that he's talking about are right along with Dream, with Morpheus, are all depicting these massive facets that they're not so much like personifications of the beings, they are the literal beings. <clears throat> like death is death. Like she is death. And and I, I thought that was really interesting. I wanted to bring that up and but more and more, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. I heard that he played a big part in helping them to create the show. But <clears throat> as far as the dreamscape thing, like personally, it's a it's a really very important to me too. I think it's very important to a lot of people who are calling in or probably listening right now. Like uh, the first dreams I began having, like that, I, and I remember them very clearly. Not not the dreams themselves, but I remember the state of dreaming very early on. Like, um, when I was, like, it started picking up when I was, like, five or so. Anyway, I had an issue of night terrors. And that's when you have a... It went on for, like, two years. And what would happen was I would have these dreams that were so, like, vivid. And I still have, like, my dreams are incredibly vivid. And they would be so vivid that I'd be terrified to go to sleep. Like, because I'd be like I was going somewhere. Like, it felt that much, it felt that real and was that sincere that I was literally aware that I was going to another place and I didn't want to go there because I was going to this particular place and I would see things there that I didn't want to see, you know. Anyway, it advanced. I remember that how, that's how it started. But then it advanced to where... I began to have like a bleed through, like the type the classic night terrors, where like I would wake up from the dream, but I would still see like the the same thing in the actual realm. Like somehow it was transferring because it was in my I mean, like as we were mentioning before about the night the dreamscape itself. Is it in the head or is it like a place? And and what's strange about it is that. This world itself that we're in, it is in the head. This is all in the head. And it's like somehow that world was blending with this one, and I could see it here too. And I like just when it'd be initially within the, like a minute or two, like not much longer than maybe 30 seconds. And I would see the same being that I was seeing in the dream, like by my window. What's interesting about that is there are accounts of, and this doesn't apply to me, but there are people who have, like, <clears throat> alien abduction stories, and they report the abduction happens to, like, a dreamscape where they are uh, experiencing it as if they're dreaming, but it's happening to them, and that is their abduction story. And the same thing kind of applies to... Uh, like the fairy realm stuff too, when they experience these things, they describe it as if it's almost like a dream, but it's real. And the problem is, the sincere truth of it is, is that I don't believe that there is much difference. And I think that those worlds are going on, like when you're dreaming, because I've, I've revisited back in dreams, the same place I had seen before in a dream, sometimes a year apart. And the and life had carried on in that world that I had seen in the dream before. So I don't think it stops. I think that the these are several worlds that were somehow like parallel existing in and I've had dreams also 
of beings like where they're impossible dreams like i had this dream once where i was like thrown into this desert like area but it was like not a desert but it was like very vast and empty and there were all these rock like rock formations and things and i could hear this voice that was too loud it was like not a voice it was like the equivalent to thunder like it was incredibly loud and i said there were some people there <laughs> and i said like who is that and they said it's raphael and they were referencing to the angel raphael and i went around the corner of this rock and i could see this boy that was like speaking to the people that were out in the middle of nowhere there was people out in the middle of nowhere and but his voice was like a force of nature and it was echoing across the mountains and i said where is this and they said iran and when i woke up it was iran because i actually don't speak with it but like it was iran the mountains of iran but they said iran and it was like this really weird way they said it <clears throat> that's actually the that's the right way to pronounce it yeah that's the correct pronunciation <laughs> that's funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um because i thought it was like this mystical land you know i was like where is this place anyway but the thing was was that like i saw him and what he did like with this one case just not to carry it on too long but he was speaking and there was like a small group of these people <clears throat> they were out in the middle of nowhere in the mountains of iran <laughs> and and he got done speaking it was this young boy and he got done speaking and he had like a little hat on and he got done speaking and he like went around the rocks and he laid down on the dirt and he covered himself with his like the thing he was wearing and just went to sleep right on the ground and on another occasion too it was just really weird <laughs> you know but i was like that was the angel raphael like he was existing in iran and he was it was just a weird dream and then i'd seen this other being one time and it was talking to me when i was like three and it had like like i was in the present day but in the dream i was like three years old and it didn't have it was like a lion it looked like a lion i could see it from the torso up and it was like the silver gray skin like it was a hairless furless lion with no ears and it told me its name and what it did was like it spelt out its name like it said its name it was a long line of letters it was like my name is z z and this is not accurate z z a z a b z a like that and it did this long like you know line of letters to tell me that's how it told me its name <laughs> and it said i'm coming to call but it was speaking telepathically right like it was like the weirdest dream ever so i when i've had dreams in the past like it's always been like technicolor like boom like like and sometimes like uh, when i was in sessions where i was having dreams that were so vivid <clears throat> i wouldn't want to go to sleep and i'd like put off going to sleep try to avoid it and then just kind of like okay okay <laughs> like i'm gonna go to sleep now and this isn't all the time this would just be like in certain times where i've been having weird dreams because you're almost afraid that it's gonna happen again <clears throat> anyway i think that they're what they're doing what what's going on is that we are like living somehow but you know hang on one second real quick i've had other dreams too where i'm not in it I'm watching, like a fly on the wall, things that are happening, and it has like nothing to do with me at all. But I can like see the room and the people, and I'm literally like floating or something. <clears throat> like I can see them and hear them, and I like it's almost like that. But I'm not in it. it has nothing to do with me at all, you know. And That's, I've seen people and super weird, super weird. Hey, real quick, let me interrupt you. Uh, Nick on the phone, I see you. Hang tight, don't hang up. We'll get to you in a sec, okay? Go ahead, Jennifer. Oh, uh, just real quick, I guess. And I've seen people. I, th I think that it is a, a dreamscape thing. I think it is a place that people are experiencing as another layer that they are living in in a parallel life in some way, like that there is existence on several layers and that uh, that we're that it goes on without us like the dream world is happening right now and like you tune into it almost in a way or you know yeah. and it's happening yeah whether you want it to or not 
Exactly. Crazy enough. So like, like we were saying earlier, so you and I are awake, but we think we are. And so other people are sleeping currently. So like all of that stuff is still happening. And, and check this out. So let's say you got a friend on the other side of the world, right? And they're sleeping when you're awake. And if they dream about you, then it's not you. It's like a doppelganger of you because you're awake, right? I mean, it's, it starts to get like pretty mind fuckery type stuff when you start to think about time zones and then people sleep at the same time or not. Do we share these spaces? Anyway, go ahead. Just a, just a quick thought there. Well, it seems like there's like multiple selves, you know, like, like the, there's not just this one existence. Like when I go to sleep, I'll pick up, not necessarily, but it's possible that I'll pick up in a completely different world, like the dream world. And it'll be a completely different world from this one. And sometimes it'll look very much like this one. And sometimes it's, there's impo- there are impossible things happening. Because sometimes the world is just as real. The places I've seen, just as real as this one. And the other ones, there's more fantastical things happening. And this is probably congruent with people who, if they, if they are able to remember or they're able to recall it in some way. <clears throat> but the Neil Gaiman thing, it's going to be a good series. I hope so. And I'm looking forward to it. And these are some, I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing topic. It really is. Because there's so much that it could go on and on. Yeah. So I yeah. look forward to hearing what everybody else has to say about Definitely, definitely. So the interesting thing about this is why I decided to do it today because uh, Night Stalker was like, "Yeah, yeah, get ready for your your hottest dream takes come uh, the first of August." I'm like, "Oh no, no, hell no! We'll just do this now, and then right, we'll do it again then too." Because of course, right, uh, these things seem to again surf in that zeitgeist. So, so we'll get ahead of it per usual, and then uh, we'll revisit this coming up pretty soon. So, we'll, maybe we'll call this the summer of dreams. Why not? Why not? Yeah, Jennifer. Yeah. Jennifer, you're, you're amazing. You're the best, as always. Uh, Jennifer here has a YouTube channel. Check it out. You're welcome to stay, too, if you want to hang out uh, on Discord, and we'll go to the call and then come back to you and the uh, rest of that. You, you, know, you know how this works. If you got some time, we got some time for you. So please give Jennifer a follow. Links in the description. She's got a YouTube channel. Thank you for calling. Thanks for your amazing thoughts, as usual, Jennifer. Thank you. Yeah, have, have a good great, night. Have a great night. Thanks a lot. 702-957-1037. Uh, there we go. Let's go to, uh, thanks for being patient. Nick in Massachusetts, you're on Troubled Minds. How are you? Hey, Mike. Doing good. How are you? Doing good, man. Go right ahead. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, loving the topic. I, I agree completely with Jennifer and, you know, how she explains how, you know, sometimes we experience our dreams without um, us being a part of it. Um. And I definitely have a bunch of those. And yeah, I mean, the dream walking thing, like it was interesting. I had a dream where, you know, I, I, I think it was a dream, but I, I feel like it's more towards like a past life or something. But um, imagine being uh, or like experiencing the life of, a, uh, of, of another person completely, even like the opposite sex. Because, you know, obviously I'm a male and I was experiencing this life through, um, to this German woman out of like out of out of everything, you know. Like I'm I'm from uh, South America, so I'm completely opposite of like this like German culture. So, and I was experiencing this the life of this woman, just looking through her eyes. You know, I, I knew I was me, but I was also seeing what she was doing and how she was feeling and how she was experiencing her life. And um, you know, this dream took place three days in that dream. You know whatever the situation was there, it was just three days of me experiencing things, um, you know, and it had a complete plot and everything, which was so interesting. Um, you know, she, she had two kids and she had a husband who worked with like as a lumberjack and, uh, you know, she had these like twin, twin boys. And, uh, you know, one day they appeared with like these little creatures from like the perspective of the woman, these things were not, they weren't like regular things. You know, but they they experienced it as um as like apes or something, you know. But she like was aware that something was wrong. You know, these kids would just appear with these little creatures, and uh, but she was she seemed confused and also not bothered by it. But me, as watching through her eyes, I was already like, "What is she doing? Like these things don't look right. Why is she like not reacting to these things like that?" And um, you know, and eventually the kids disappeared. And, you know, the, the woman, obviously distraught, she, uh, 
she brought in these like investigators who weren't doing that much to like figure out what happened to the kids. And, you know, she eventually also went to look for the kids into like the woods. And uh, she also like disappeared. And I like witnessed even her death and everything. So like, is that dream walking? You know? That, well, that's nuts. <laughs> I mean, you tell me, is that uh, so, so? So this is corroboration to real life or is this just dreams? No, that was just a, that was a full dream. Like, it okay, took okay. three days of the person's life for me to witness in one dream, you know, as me sleeping through the dream. Yeah. So it was like you. three days of their life until, you know, from that point of something changed until the point that either they died or something happened to them. But I experienced everything, you know, until that point. And then I woke up. <laughs> yeah, like uh, like uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember who was saying this, maybe Matt was talking about how uh, the, the dreams themselves, it could be like just a flicker in your brain, but like it could be days or weeks of the dream itself. And it seems like you kind of got that, like a multiple day situation. That is absolutely wild. So, so what do you think is happening then regarding dream walking in this space? Are you? Is this like a story you made up or do you think that somewhere out there this actually happened? I have no idea. I really like, I was trying to research if there was like any, any like deaths in Germany and specific place of the dream. Cause it, the dream took place somewhere in the woods and you know, there was a specific car and I was like looking for like things. There's like this little truck that seems to just carry wood. And um, it looked very, it looked like a toy, you know, it was very clunky and, and, and like thick for no reason. Um, and I thought, like, if I can search something like that up, you know, maybe there's credibility of, of it. But um, what was strange was that, you know, they were speaking German, and I couldn't understand that. And I don't speak German. <laughs> um, hey, man. You know, it was so, so weird because I can, I can, I was experiencing everything through this person's eyes while also making my own judgments of how they, what, you know, what they were experiencing. And, and just me seeing, like, what is she doing? What, what is this person doing? And, you know, it was interesting that I was looking through the eyes of a woman, you know. Yeah, and yeah, that's, just that's experiencing wild. what she said. It was like she, she thought of everything. And I'm like, what if I'm just like there? Yeah. So, so do you think this could be like a past life situation? Was it, was it uh, clearly like maybe old, like uh, 50 or 60 or 70 years ago type of thing? Yeah. Even that, I was like looking at it because what I remember of the place was that they had light bulbs. So... They were, I feel like that wasn't that long ago. The truck, you know, it obviously ran like on diesel or something. And um, it, 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 I guess the location was the most like interesting because they did have like a fire pit or something, you know, like they, they don't think they, they had like obviously like a heater or something, but they, they definitely use like cut, cut wood or like logs and they had like a fire outside and. Yeah, I, just, I remember like all these little pieces of, of things that might indicate like a year or something, but I could never like really fi- figure out where they were because they don't live. They didn't live in a city or anything. They just lived in the middle of the woods. And I remember like it was like the fall time, so the trees were um, already like shedding the leaves, and the ground was pretty much like yellowish orange. So yeah, it was like so so weird. And I think the most interesting thing was that you know I understood German. Well, I, I don't speak it, you know. <laughs> I, I was going to say, also, also Nick, I speak German in my dreams, too, just because, uh, just because, just because, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> I've seen, I've seen Inglorious Bastards. I must speak German. <laughs> hey, so, 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 right. great story. The question here for you is, uh, do you think that these dream spaces, like, it sounds like this might, it may have been a time travel past life situation for you, maybe like a regression on a dream state of a past life or a past memory from a past life, who knows, right? But do you think these dream spaces, right, yeah. let's take it to the next step of like, maybe let's be slippery with the way time works. And do you think we do share this dream space where maybe time isn't linear? What do you think about that? Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. I think, you know, based on even like experiments with room of viewing and like using the tarot and everything to like gather information from whatever points of time. Yeah, obviously, like not for my experience, uh, time isn't linear and we can like grasp any information from anywhere, um, anytime. And, you know, and I believe, you know, if that was a past life dream, um, I think I like tapped into like that energy. It was interesting too, because like, 
I was like living in Boston and, you know, I was like writing the tea and these like, for some reason it was raining that day. And then, you know, some like three drops of water like fell on my head. And what I realized that later, that was before I had the dream, but like in the same dream, um, the lady also experienced water falling on her head, like on the bed. And she got hit by like these little water droplets. And so I, I feel like there was like little synchronicities everywhere. And I feel like that triggered that dream. So I'm not sure if like some kind of energy, I, like I tapped into some kind of energy where it like, um, what do you call it? A, it, um, like it's a fractal, you know, it's a fractal of a timeline. Yeah. So maybe it, like I, I hit that fractal, like, you know, those, those specific synchronicities so that it can be triggered to that time, maybe. So like, then, yeah, you tap into like this energy that kind of like, um, repeats, I guess. Yeah, so so it could be like like they talk about uh, residual hauntings. So maybe maybe it's has nothing to do with you or a past life or anything, but maybe it was a real event in that sort of um, let's say even a minor trauma like the water, like a cold water dripping on your head, sort of sprung to life this memory or this thought or this tulpa, right? Crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff. Um, I love it. I love it. So, so, uh, well, I got you on here. What do you think about the dreamscape? And do you think there is a keeper of dreams? Me- meaning like Morpheus, the God of dreams. Do you think there's an administrator or like, let's say dream cops or something like that? Or do you think it's a uh, willy nilly and, uh, we're, we're free to do what we want in the dream world? Yeah, well, I've interesting, uh, no, I, I've never experienced like anything that connects all my dreams. Cause you know, I always dream and I do remember the majority of my dreams and they've never really repeated. I've always been to like new places. You know, it's always about like me, uh, like waking up or like experiencing a new place, a new location. And I'm always like staying over some kind of like, um, some kind of house or some kind of, um, like, a what do you call it? Like a little like cabin or something but there's always this theme of me staying over somewhere else and me walking outside and experiencing everything. But, um, no, I've never like really had anything that said that everything was connected for a specific, uh, from a specific point, you know, there was like never any like reoccurring characters or reoccurring, um, like, I guess like nodes, I would say like nodes, like important nodes in each dream. Um, so there was like no clues of like, yeah, something was the same except just the theme of it. Um, but I think it could be possible. I like possible. I, I, I drink some maybe juice from time <laughs> to time. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love maybe. It. I love it. You're the best, bro. I appreciate the phone call. Anything else you got for us while we got you on the phone? No, that's it. Thank you so much. You're the best. Thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. Always a pleasure. You're welcome anytime, okay? Have a fantastic night. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks a lot. There you go. Nick in Massachusetts. Uh, look, hey, hey, we got the Trouble Minds fam is big. We got lots of lots of fine folks out there that uh, have, have great takes on this type of stuff. We're still talking about this, right? Again, back to the dream walking. Now, just real fast, we got a phone call. Stay, hang tight there. I see MJ. We'll get to you. And don't worry, Matt in uh, Matt in Colorado and uh, we got, I see APOC there. We'll get back to you guys. Uh, hang tight. Just a moment. Real quick, this dream walking, right, in the Marvel Universe, right? Now, this is, this is just real quick to, to kind of fill in some things that I hinted at but didn't really talk about. Now, Dreamwalking, this is from the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe.fandom.com, their wiki. Dreamwalking is a spell within the Darkhold that allows sorcerers to possess another counterpart of themselves in the multiverse, all right? Now, that's sort of the whole point here of the dream walking is that it's not just about dreams it's themselves it's or a dream itself. It becomes something a little more, let's say, multiversal when you have a spell that allows you to dream walk and possess a counterpart of yourself in the multiverse. Like I said, imagine like a there's a Michael Strange out there that's a plumber somewhere, right? So if I had this spell, I could go into a meditative state and possess with all my knowledge and ability in this life, 
the Michael Strange plumber in the other life and turn him into a hellion talk show host. You know what I'm saying? And also a maybe juice drinker extraordinaire. But you know what I mean? So I, I think this is a fantastic thing and not just in terms of dream walking, but in sort of merging realities. So I just want to bring it out, bring up what this exactly was about when I brought up dream walking. And there's a lot of ways to look at this, the shamanic view of this. Again, uh, shout out to Matt in California. He's now the official shaman of Troubled Minds. And uh, and then there we go. You guys tell me, dream walking, you know, dream states, what's going on with this? Uh, you tell me, 702-957-1037. We'll get you guys on the Discord in just a sec. Let's go to MJ in Virginia. You're on Troubled Minds, my friend. Go right ahead. Yeah, um, you're to talk about different dreams. I have um, precognate dreams, but they're warning dreams. Um, not, I'm going to say too often, but often enough. And uh, what happens with them is I'll have the dream. It's a warning or, uh, you know, poss- a possibility coming up. And it could be two months. It could be five years. But I'll eventually get to where I'm living that dream. It's actually happening in my life. And the dream will flash through my head. So at that moment, I can rearrange what's happening in front of me at that time. So it doesn't, uh, so whatever is supposed to happen that's detrimental doesn't happen. Okay, so, so, so what do you think is happening there? So clearly, like we've said, probably the dream state is timeless, okay? Like, uh, as we know, time is relative. Space-time is sort of locked into the human experience and here on Earth, and it exists, time exists differently in the universe. But clearly and obviously, I think, time in the dream state would also work very, very much differently. So what's happening with the time? Are you precognitive, uh, like years out very quickly, like a week or a day later? How does this work? Is it, does, it, does it fluctuate? What do you think is going on here? Well, part of it is um, that you're, as you're actually projecting into your future, okay? And you're getting information from yourself in the future to bring back with you whether you're conscious of it or not, um, but the ones that are conscious are the most important. But I, it's, I think you're just you're zipping down your lifeline in a dream state and popping in at a certain time in your life uh, and, you know, visualizing or oh, that's coming up. OK, and then you go back to where you are now. So you're just doing a time slip into your own future, but you're doing it with parts of yourself or, you know, that that part of yourself. Damn it! I muted myself again. Okay, so so that means that uh, so it is so so time is willy nilly in that space, and you are sort of dream walking into the future to see these things. That makes sense to me. So, is this something that you you've had for a long time, or is it something you practiced and got better at? Um, it just happens. It just happens. I don't really um, try to practice it to see what's coming up. You know, it's, it's like at that point, I think you're probably a little paranoid, or you you don't want to get ahead of the game. And, you know, for the, for the most part, you just stay in the now. Um, that's what I do. I mean, it's kind of going long in life and suddenly it'll come in. It depends on the situation I'm in. Um, I've had it where uh, I was at a bookstore doing readings and I had a, the woman that owned the store was trying to copycat the way I read. And I had a dream about that. And um, so the next day I just came in there and I just picked my stuff up and left. And it, you know, it was very apparent because she was watching me in the store trying to mimic what I was doing. But she did, she, she was a card reader, uh, so I had a warning about that. And I came into the store. I think I hung around for about a week or so, and I just noticed she was trying to emulate some of the stuff I was doing. And you know, it wasn't working. But I didn't like the fact that she was in my dream, and I saw her for who she really was. Um, and in the dream, I had a cat, a uh, uh, long-haired uh, orange tabby. In the dream, I'm running out of this old house, and I'm looking at her. She's looking in the window, but not at me. And then I look up at the wall, and the, my cat had been uh, disemboweled. His legs were pinned up against the wall. He'd been disemboweled. And I had, like, all these other, you know, lookalike cats running around my legs all over, like 15 of them. And in that dream, she's standing there. That What it meant to me was she was trying to copycat what I was doing, but she had disembowelment was she was trying to get deep within me to see what was going on. Okay. Uh, uh, and so who was this? Was this a, do you think this was a person person or is this an entity entity, like some sort of celestial? Oh, no, no, it was her. It was her. I saw her real hair color and, you know, who she was and everything. It was the same person. 
So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, you know, some sort of demon or, uh, you know, some, some other realm. It was, it was her. And I was okay. just being warned that that's what she was doing. But the fact that my cat was very close to me and that it was just, dis- it you pinned up against the wall being disemboweled, um, basically was a threat to me, uh, in that sense. So I just picked myself up and laughed. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that seems legit to me. I got to go. I got things to do. I'm out of here. Uh, hey, so so uh, regarding this dreamscape, do you, is it, is, you think it's a space we share or do you think it's all like our, our own personal universe? How does that work? Um, we share it. It's our personal universe. We share it. Once you learn to maneuver that area and you get proficient at it, um, you'll start to meet other people that are being proficient also. It's kind of like, uh, what's that, uh, Oliver Seagull, the higher you fly, the, you know, the, you find a few seagulls that went really high type of thing, and some people just say low. Um, it's that type of thing. You can get in there and start to maneuver it because you, you get to a point where uh, you can talk in your dreams, you can analyze in your dreams, you see what's going on, uh, and you can, if you want, you can. I don't like to change my dreams because they're coming through for a reason the way they are. Um, and if you start to change them, that means now you're starting to maneuver and manipulate. So now you're taking that world over and, you know, it's, I don't know how much you can really manipulate of it, but then you should start meeting other people that are doing the same thing. And that to me would be, uh, doing out of body or getting close to do, uh, and you know, very much a full out of body. Okay. All right. And then, so regarding, uh, the, do you think there's an administrator? of the dream space, like some sort of a, like a, again, the name is Morpheus, the Greek God of dreams or uh, the Sandman. Do you think there's some entity that sort of uh, curates that, that let's say realm? Um, I think it curates itself. I don't think there's anybody in particular. I think it's self governing in a sense, the more aware you become, the more you can do um, because it takes a long time to get aware of it. And uh, if you try to get manipulative or negative in a dream, um, my feeling is like I see negative things in my dreams. And like I said, in a, in a waking state, it started happening. So I was able to kind of avoid it or manipulate it or just kind of go around it and stay out of, you know, because it was coming at me. Um, so I think maybe it governs itself more than anything, because some people just you got to be able to maneuver it. And consciously, while you're in your dream state, consciously maneuver it. So I think maybe it just governs itself more. I don't know if there's really some entity out there governing all of it. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I appreciate it. What else you got for us, my friend? Nine sprechen Sie Deutsch. <laughs> Wait, you speak German in your, in your dreams, too? I don't speak too? German either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Neither do I. Uh, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't speak German either, so. Okay. All right. Well, uh, at least we do in our dreams, right? Right, <laughs> right MJ? <laughs> <laughs> German, French, yeah. Yeah, I speak it all. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a real maven of society in my dreams. You'll see. You'll see one of these days. <laughs> well, we'll come across each other. I'll be like, MJ, is that you? <laughs> and I'll start speaking in we. French. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll do every other sentence. One will be Spanish, one will be French, one will be German, and you'll understand all of it. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> it's coming to a dream. Mm-hmm. You. You're the best, MJ. You're the best. I appreciate the phone call. Thanks for being patient with us tonight. Always a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. All right, bye. Thanks, brother. There you go. 702-957-1037. That's MJ in Virginia, good friend of mine, good friend of the shows. Hey, look, look, look at so many friends, so many great people, so many, so many individuals that think outside of the box and just want to sort of make sense of the world we live in. And I love it. Uh, sorry to James for not uh, asking your question. I had it on top of mine, but my, my literally, my brain goes like this. I get a thought in and it goes into like 15 different directions and it has to because of the way we do this. So uh, I put it in. I was like, okay, I'm going to ask that. And then he said something else, something else, something else. Nick, Nick did, and then I forgot to ask the question. So my, my bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> it was a good question. Uh, 702-957-1037. Let's go to uh, APOC in Oklahoma. You're on Trouble Minds. What's up? How are you tonight? Hey, um, having a little bit of uh, throat trouble. So if I have to mute up, uh, you know what to do. <laughs> I got you. I got your back. Go right ahead. I'm going to shut up and let you get through it. Hey, um, so when I was about... When I was about 16, um, I uh, wrote a book about, um, well, a, sh- a story, I guess, about dreams and um, the dream world, which was kind of interesting. And it lined up with some of the things that, that uh, some people had been saying this evening. Um, 
<clears throat> moving forward, um, I uh, after uh, an interesting experience that I had, uh, some people call it Kundalini or whatever, uh, when I moved to California, I started to write down my cosmology. <clears throat> and, um, excuse me, uh, this is this is where I got the feeling or the idea that the multiple worlds theory was incorrect. And one of one of the reasons is because, um, again, I'll, I'll just say it again. I, I think in pictures and diagrams and, and connections and and stuff like that. So um, what I did is I just <clears throat> wrote down what I saw, you know, and um, that became my my cosmology, which included like the fractal nature of the universe and everything. Um, and part of that had to do with dreams and had to do with how we, how the fractal sort of nature of the universe worked in the way I was seeing it at that, at that time. And um, in that particular cosmology, and I have it all written down somewhere, I'm, I'll try to find it someday. Um, the cosmology in the dream gate was that it's gradient just like time is uh was in my cosmology gradient so um <clears throat> you can be more or less dense in time time can work differently in different ways in in the dream world um it seems according to research to attach to that quantum state or a quantum way of experiencing time in respect that you can you can lay down for or I could lay down for five minutes and have 30 dreams or more I, I could just continue to remember them you know down the line and it, it's it's almost like in the dreamscape uh, time works faster <laughs> or time moves faster than in this particular uh, existence but again, this is hard, hard right now because I'm not, <laughs> I'm, uh, words are hard at the moment. <laughs> but um, when Jen was talking earlier about uh, the dreamscape being different worlds, that's how I perceive it as well. So, or that's where my cosmology took me as well, is um, that there are these gradient experiences in our dreams that, yes, the closest one would be connected to our psyche or our, our learning, our, our education, our, our translating, you know, this life and processing that. Then the next one down the line would be, you know, the potential to have shared dreams and, and, and on and on and on. And, and uh, I don't know which comes first or last or whatever, but, but if it's a gradient scale, if it's layered and um, on a wavelength, so to speak, like like the color spectrum, you know, consider it like a spectrum. So if, if it's on a spectrum and it goes on into infinity, then potentially the dream universe would be where we live alternate realities while experiencing this one except perhaps which my cosmology went into that too except perhaps having simultaneous lives having uh, past lives and future lives and then that guy called in and i cannot remember his name nick and um it was a nick who was talking about being in another body and anyone who was in voice chat a few nights ago heard me talking about a very similar experience and I had several after that of being like finding myself in someone else's life and just knowing what they knew and, and uh, being who they were. And I didn't know if that was related to a past life or anything else, but it, it was so extraordinary um, to have those experiences. And um, so uh, technically speaking, um, I think that's where the expansion goes in the fractal is uh, from kind of this point. And then somebody else men mentioned uh, nodes, which is also funny. But like we, we go from this node or this, this point into potentially our internal, our microcosm of existence, 
could be accessed through the dreamscape and the macrocosm <clears throat> could be accessed in uh, this particular uh, reality in this way. And I think it goes up from there. I think we have a larger self. I think we have multiple connections and points that may in fact go on into infinity if you look at it in a in a fractal way and be entangled in certain ways with different points um but anyway i just i wanted to bring those things up and i'm feeling okay so if if you want i have uh, a couple other things i was going to say but that was the main gist of what i wanted to say <laughs> Yeah, no, no, good stuff. I, and I think it's a, uh, the more ways we can look at this sort of dreamscape or dream state or how it affects individuals or, again, you know, like, like some people have those sort of moments where they think they're in somebody else's body a hundred years ago type of stuff, right? Like uh, Rohan's got right. a wild story about that, about how he went through like 10 lives in like a night type of thing, right? Like 10 different right, people right. living in there. I mean, ask Rohan about that story when you guys, when you guys run into him. But I mean, th that's the thing. So it's like some people dream about fantastical shit we're fighting dragons with swords and like dungeons and dragons type stuff right that the the, uh, the celestial like like battle or whatever and other people uh, when they dr have these dream states they 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 go back in time and they they exhibit uh, let's say even past lives or maybe not past lives like like residual um, energy and who like uh, that's why we that's why these conversations are fantastic because like who knows like how to quantify this because we can only have our own personal experience but then also try and like match it up to everybody else's uh shit gets weird right. but go ahead you got some other thoughts go right ahead yeah well um in a, in half excuse me in having had um uh, shared dreams um it has you know been very interesting to contemplate you know how and which leads me back to that um story i wrote when i was 16 was uh, part of that story was that people could choose or be in their own dream their own reality and make their own worlds or they could be in shared dreams where they sh uh, shared realities and um when when i had my first uh shared dream it was um me and my ex-husband who passed away um had the exact same dream but we aren't we were in two separate parts of the town and there were rockets going off and the world was coming and blah 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 and um i was trying to save some people in one part of town and get them set up with some like peanut butter for protein and water for, you know, just to be able to last <laughs> however long this lasted to, to survive. And then I was going to try to make my way to find him. And I got out and it was actually a very poignant kind of weird dream because when I got out, there was of course all this traffic, everybody was trying to get someplace and so I'm stuck in traffic, and in the rearview mirror, I'm looking at these signs. And there are gas station signs and grocery store signs. And, and these signs are revealing what they really were. And they, they would sort of shed their, their veil of, of uh, whatever, and become these all-seeing eyes you know like the one on the on the dollar bill <laughs> and um and so it was like this really interesting thing because when we woke up both of us at the same time said i have to tell you about this dream i had and <clears throat> we had the exact same dream he was on the other side of town i was on you know, the other side of town and we were both going to try to find each other. And he saw the rockets. I saw the rockets. Everything was very, very similar. And, um, yeah, it was, it was really crazy. It's happened a few other times, but it was, but I did want to mention that I think that the meaning in these dreams shared or, or otherwise, if you practice doing some of this stuff, uh, it may be really interesting. It may be <clears throat> it may be something that that you can grow from and 
develop from, but also it may sort of distract from from the quality of of awe from from the meaning within these experiences that we bring out of that place. Um, I don't know, uh, but uh, that's that's my take on that. I do have more, but I am starting to have a, a challenge <laughs> uh, okay. being able to communicate. So I'm going to let everybody else take it from from here. Thanks for thanks for battling through that. Uh, get get the rest you need, and uh, thanks thanks Apoc. I appreciate the takes there. Uh, Apoc uh, here has a, has a podcast called uh, Apocalypse Tau. Check it out. Links in the description down below. Good friend of mine. Good friend of the shows. Uh, she's you can find her active on Discord uh, most times as well. Like like I said, come meet these people. If you haven't met these people, you think you know them from from hearing them give us amazing takes on troubled minds. They're more amazing than this because uh, it's more dynamic in in terms of who they are. We're, we're talking about a particular thing tonight, so you get like people talking about particular thing these people that you hear on here are amazing people I, if i name everybody you guys are gonna i'm gonna leave out the robert and he's gonna get super mad so i won't do that but let's let's uh links in the description follow her follow everybody else and come come join the discord troubleminds.org click the discord link you got daryl singing karaoke in there i just wish i had time for all the things to be everywhere all at the same time i'm missing james's show a lot of the time i'm missing daryl's karaoke because i'm literally like frantically show prepping trying to read about the sandman you know what i mean i'm like fuck 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 so so you guys know like i'll, I'll do what i can but let's support each other and get in here and come say hi and meet these people like i said they're all incredible 702-957-1037 let's go to uh tam bam in uh, south africa What's up? Welcome to Trouble Minds. Go right ahead. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Fantastic. You know, you know me. <laughs> I try to make every day fantastic. In spite of the universe, fuck off. I'm going to be great no matter what. What's on your mind, my friend? What do you know about dreams and this Sandman and the Keepers of Dreams and all the rest of this? Well, firstly, happy birthday to Jen. Yes. Happy, happy birthday happy to birthday. Jen. That's, yeah, there you go. Happy birthday to Jen. I forgot. I'm a heel. Hey, what's new? <laughs> Thank you for reminding That's me. Awesome. Happy birthday to Jen. Happy birthday to Jen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I feel, okay, let's look at the science of it. So when it comes to meditation and dreams, sleep, um, memory of your dreams, it's all theta waves. It is really, that's all it is. Because we have different waves, brain waves, right? Everyone talks about REM sleep and non-REM, but it's the wavelength that connects us. So theta waves is um, meant to be, like I said, meditation. But also when you are falling asleep and you go into theta, you experience an out-of-body experience where you have memory of what you experience in your dream. So with people who slip into, who have memories of their dreams and recall a lot of their dreams as vivid, they are slipping into theta. And, it's, and I feel that it's a very rare thing to do. There's this TikToker on, um, on obviously on TikTok. Um, she, the, her channel is all about what she experiences because what happens to her, she, she says she literally falls asleep and goes into theta. She literally, as she puts her head down, closes her eyes, and she's somewhere else out of her body. And she, she always does a lot to, to share her experiences. And sometimes it scares her to death where she's crying, you know. Um, the, one of the things that she did say is that she remembers clearly going to sleep on her friend's couch and waking up in her dream on an alien spaceship, looking out of a window into space and she recalls herself not physically herself she's in some another being's body she's still humanoid but she's not human and um she still has like you know humanoid looking hair with eyes and nose whatever looking like a human and um she turns to the people that are standing next to her and it's that person that she's in mother and sister and they turn to her and look at her and say, you know, have a conversation. And then they realize, but you're not supposed to be here. Who are you? And as soon as the mother wants to go and like, uh, I think they have some, she said they have some kind of alert system where another consciousness, where it enters at the body of their species, um, they have to have an alert system. And just as she was about to press the alert system, she, she got a 
jump scare, a jump fright, and landed back in her body on Earth. No, no, no. She didn't land back in her body yet. Because of the jump scare, she was trying to find her body on Earth. So she was looking everywhere, and eventually she found her own body and went into back into her own body where she awoke. So it begs the question, do we share consciousness or subconsciousness or dream state? Yes, we do. But it, it's incomprehensible how many tangents um, or octopus tentacles it goes into. So do we swap consciousness with other beings out there? Maybe. She says, I mean, the way she talks and the way she describes everything in detail, I mean, I couldn't make this shit up. So that's kind of not the first story I've heard where another person has entered another body of another species intergalactically. And what happened with this species is they actually have some kind of protective dome against other life consciousness. She, this other woman, had to get out of this alien species body to get into her own body before the dome shut Another alarm system before the dome shut, um, like closed off, and then where she couldn't leave. So it seems like, and this is a totally different person. So it seems like there is an alert system where you're not supposed to. We're not supposed to mix. We're not supposed to jump in and out of consciousness to other bodies of other sentient beings. We're supposed to experience what we experience here. They're supposed to experience what they experience there. To mix between the two, I think there's a rule. It must be. There's some kind of universal rule or law against that. Um, so that's one thing. I don't know what you think of that. I, I think it's complicated. It, it's interesting that uh, dream states can become, uh, like, like you're describing, like sort of abduction experiences. I mean, we're talking about alien ships and, uh, I mean... Like shit gets weird, doesn't it? And then, so, like I said, like some people, like Nick called in, he had like a a dream that he was in the body of a woman, maybe in like say fifty or hundred years ago type of thing. We don't even know the time frame, and he's not even sure it's related to himself. Like it's so crazy. But then we have this other situation where it's it's sort of like an alien abduction type experience. I mean. Shit's weird. Shit's weird, dude. And so I think that's why we need to talk about this stuff. Like Matt, Matt in uh, California was saying, we need to share our dreams in these dream states because if we don't, there's no chance in hell we'll figure out what the hell's really going on. But that's fantastic. So what was the source of that story again? Where, where did you hear that? I'll, I'll keep on forgetting her name. It's from TikTok. I'll get her name for you and you can actually go watch her videos. Okay. And you can tell from your perspective if she's telling the truth, if it, if it is, holds value or not. But I believe her. Okay. Because I've chatted to her. That's all it takes. You know, I really. Hey, that's good enough. Yeah, for yeah, me. yeah. Good enough for me, Tam Bam. You you don't have to justify. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So so then, what what do you believe regarding these dream states? And let's say so, do we share them? And then the second, is there an administrator of these dream states, like a, a Sandman or a Morpheus, like the god of dreams, something like this, or is it more of like an ungoverned sort of space? How do you feel about that? Okay, so like I said, it, it seems like there's a rule that you can't jump into other sentient beings' consciousness, right? So within the rule, there must be someone who makes the rules or governs the rules. So it makes sense that there is a ruler or a group of universal whatever. A council. The this council. Council. <laughs> it, it makes sense, right? So... Or else everyone can just jump into everyone else's consciousness, fuck up their lives and come back. You know, I mean, we can't. there has to be some kind of rule or regulation. Hey, so Sandman, I don't know, but fuck, it's interesting. Is. Yeah, it is interesting, isn't it? Hundred percent, hundred percent. We're running late, so we um, got We got a jet. We okay, got sure. we got folks behind you. Uh, what else you got? What else you got? Real quick before we before we uh, bounce on the next person. No, I was just I was just going to say like I was going to tell you about my dream, but I can leave that. Um, uh, do, and then do, I was just it, wondering. Do it if you can do it briefly. Go ahead. I'd rather talk about this. Okay. What would happen if you fall asleep or meditate while you have the Oculus on in the metaverse? Ooh. That is a question. Back well, like it's, that goes back to the dream vertising and that that terrifying, <laughs> uh, right? Sort of a uh, controlling our dream states for. Uh, some other gain monetary gain <laughs> yeah and you know what i just read the other day 
is that uh, Facebook has been doing a test. Uh, I think it's a decade long test on how brainwaves affect um, a social media or how advertising and things like that. That's what I read. Mm hmm. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's the ultimate goal. That's that full spectrum control. They want it. They want it more than anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, great stuff, Tam Bam. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, Tam Bam yeah. uh, has an Instagram. Hey, Tam Bam's an influencer. When did we get influencer Tam Bam t-shirts? Um, when I hit 10K, which is like probably tomorrow. Okay, there you go. Check out Tam Bam's TikTok, her Instagram. Links in the description below. Uh, hey, look, uh, one day I'll be like, yeah, that's right. I knew Tam Bam at some point, and uh, she's, I she's too big for me now. But but one day, one day, <laughs> <laughs> look, go check it out. It's, it's definitely Tam Bam influencer. She does all kinds of amazing stuff. Uh, links in the description. She's got a link tree. Please check it out. Go give her a follow on all the places that you actually have: Instagram, TikTok, etc., and so on. You're the best, Tam. Thanks for thanks for waking up early for us. She's in South Africa and literally wakes up at the crack of dawn before the sun to listen to Troubled Minds. It's not lost on That's me. Right. I appreciate that so in much. In winter. In winter, oh good God! Thank you so much. <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you how how often I would not do that. So uh, my 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 thanks are triplicate. <laughs> You're the best, Tam. <laughs> Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Sure. Uh, let's go to. Uh, we got more. We got more. Uh, let's go back to. Uh, I cut Jennifer off a little bit. Let's go back to Jennifer, and then we'll uh, do the uh, go back to Matt in California. Uh, sorry, Colorado. Then we'll go to James, and then we'll finish up. Jennifer, go right ahead. I cut you off a little short because we had calls behind you. Go right ahead. What are your What are your additional thoughts? here yeah you didn't cut me off short not at all but so i don't know if you've ever seen the movie pan's labyrinth in the story the child is experiencing a parallel world one is the actual events if you haven't seen the movie it doesn't really matter it's much like your own life you're experiencing a certain reality and at the same time, the child is experiencing like a, a different reality that is symbolically the same reality. What's going on is, uh, what I think that movie was trying to portray and what's going on in the real life and what this dreamscape what we're talking about is that you have what appears to be reality, which is what you're going through every day. And everyone is believing that this is the begin all end all of experiencing and you're going to be born into it and you're going to die and that'll be the end of it and maybe there'll be more we don't know but every single day of your life you lay down and against your will which is kind of interesting because in Neil Gaiman's Sandman all of the seven endless which are Dream, destiny, death, desire, despair, delirium, and destruction. And all of those aspects have a sigil and can be summoned at will by any of the other endless. And they are timeless. And they are billions of years old. They are older than the gods and older than the fey folk and older than all of the beings and they're the original beings in no game and sandman and the gist is that i believe that we are in each one of us and we make ourselves real small and we should do that because humbleness is so polite <laughs> but the truth is that i think that we are encompassing all of those seven aspects and what he did <clears throat> was he depicted that we are these, these are the human aspects which are beyond time and space and beyond any belief. And they're encompassed by something so much greater that knows us beyond this personality that we see every day. But when you lay down and you have to, whether you, like I say, they all have sigils and summonings. For example, dream has a sigil, despair has a sigil. But if they want to reach out, they take the sigil of that being and they fixate upon it. And the being is summoned. And much like that in our own life, 
whether we want to or not, we are summoned every single night that we go to sleep. There's a summoning of something much greater than ourselves. We are, this existence, I think, is incredibly remarkable. And it's unbelievable that we're even experiencing any of this. And it's clear that there's something um, unbelievable happening. And there's something strange that whispers that is nothing. And you live and you die. And there's something that, that we cannot believe in that. Because this is unbelievable, this experience that we're exper what we're having here, this ritual, this a mass, it just is <laughs> whatever. I got you. <laughs> I got you. I got you. This you know ritual, yeah, this it's, ritual it's, of life, ritual of life is kind of what, life. What, yeah. That's, that's what I was picking up. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> So, because it is, and it's unique to each of us, and we think we're all so very special and unique. But the in Game of Thrones, sorry, <laughs> but in Game of Thrones, I you have it. the faceless, and what they do in that mythos is the same thing as in the dreamscape and the livingscape. But the faceless men, they can put on any face they need to as they go through. And if you think about life, we are constantly wearing a mask, one way or another, when we're trying to express ourselves for what we want to be understood as, and what we demand to be, or hope to be, or wish they would think, or, oh, or, you know, don't care at all. But we're all these different players on Plato's cave, you know. And in the dream world, it's the same thing. Somehow, all the players, they can be your lover, they can be your friend, they can be your enemy. And they will look nothing like they do in this world when you're in the dream state. Or they'll be exactly, it just depends, I don't know, it, just, it varies. But they'll put on these different masks, but is it all the same thing? Are we all the same thing? I don't know, but it's, it's beyond a doubt that every day... We are every so many hours, or you'll die, <laughs> or you'll die. They'll summon you into the unconscious state, into a world you've never been into, and they'll, before you wake up, they'll either let you remember, if you demand to, if you really try to, you will remember. But if you don't really notice, you'll forget, and that's okay too. Because you have to go on with your life. Otherwise, there's like this weird blending, which seems like there's no life or no death. And if you were to live in that state, you wouldn't be, would you be able to tell the difference? Like people have reported, oh, you die in your dream and that's the end. That's not the case. I have died in dreams. I have had dreams where I must have died. But in that same dream state, woke up somewhere else alive. And I woke up, but was alive in another dream state. So it's like we're all this mass of energy, of thought and emotion and incredible passion and ideas. And it's constantly flowing through us. And we're being summoned, like in Neil Gaiman's stories and the, the Sandman stories, which are so beautiful, really. <laughs> Against your will, even. Whether you want to or not, when your name is called, you come forth. And it's the same thing with the dream state. Whether you want to or not, you're called forth. And we hope to have control of it. But I've had lucid dreams too where I've said to the other dreamer, or I've said to myself, whoever it was, I know I'm dreaming, but I couldn't do anything. I was like, I'll, I'll fix this, what's ever wrong. But I wasn't able to, even though I knew I was dreaming. And then I said, in the dream, I'm dreaming right now. Let me show you, I can do this and that. But I wasn't able to. And it's the same, it's not much different than the waking world. If you were to say that we're dreaming, this is a dream. This is not real, but it's real. And we can live and die here. But, and you feel like you should have much more power than you do. But it's very strange. It is very and strange. It, 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 it seems like a cosmic mashup of, uh, 
Uh, all kinds of bullshit. Like, like I always say, it's complicated. And I say bullshit to demean it only because it's, I think it is magnificent, like you're describing. It's uh, this this moment. This, uh, yeah, right? this, yeah. I mean, perhaps it's bullshit. I don't know. No, no. I, I don't mean, mean perhaps it's... I, I mean, maybe yes, but I, mean, I, don't, I don't mean it in those who terms. Who knows? Though. I don't mean it in those terms. What just... else could it, but, what else, but what else could it be? I mean, let it be. I mean, that's that's satisfactory, in my opinion. Because when you can't explain something... The most comfortable thing to say is a bunch of bullshit. And it makes me feel more comfortable as well because I do not know. <laughs> no, 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 you, you, <laughs> yeah. you miss, no, no, wait, real quick. You misunderstand my intent. I'm just saying that, like, me repeating all the things you just said, I encapsulated into one word. And the, the one word is a poor word, and I said bullshit. Let's say a. a uh, no, hell, like, I'm not offended. No, no, not at all. yeah, yeah. No, 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 I know, I know. Uh, it's an amalgamation <laughs> of the energy and thought. And it's incredible. That's a better way for me to put it. No, That's Mike, what I mean. The truth is, the truth is, Mike, it's all bullshit. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's what I. That's what I didn't mean to say. That's not what I meant to do. What I. The additional thought is actually what I meant to say. Like like brevity sometimes when you try and cut in and interrupt somebody is angular and ugly. So I apologize. That's not what I meant. <laughs> and I know you're not offended. No, it's, it's okay. Not. It's not Mike. It's Mike, stop it. You're okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, okay, no. okay. I I appreciate it, Jennifer. Always amazing stuff. We got more calls to get to. We got to finish this up. You're the best. Follow Jennifer. Follow Way Puck. Follow James. Follow Tam Bam. Follow Matt in Colorado. His book. All the links in the description below. Thank you, Jennifer, for popping back in and sharing sharing more thoughts. I always appreciate it. Let's go. Uh, thank let's you, see. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> let's go to uh, Matt in Colorado. You've been quiet for a very, very long time. If you're still there, he's still there. What's up, Matt? Go right ahead. Yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. All right. Mike, you know, you. I heard you say this over the last uh, two weeks, that you got the best callers in radio. And you know what? I didn't even know what you were saying until I've been listening for a while. And I just got to tell you, buddy, you got the best callers in radio. I know. It's not even close either. It's not even close. Like, like it's one of those things, like literally if you, if anybody can refute that, find me any other radio show in the world, the fucking world. Okay. We're not going multiverse just yet. We may, but find me any other radio show in the world that has amazing people that call in consistently like this, because every single person that calls in is absolutely fire. Go right ahead, my friend. I know. Right. You know, I, I told you, I found you on the paranormal network. I scroll around the different channels. I, I, I find different shows to listen to. And then I, I happen upon yours, and I, I was just like, oh, man, this guy's good. These colors are good. And and I still go back to that, and I'm like, I'm bored. I put on Paranormal Radar, and I'm like, oh, man, this isn't so good, you know? And no, I, man. We, that, we, we, we lap I'm those not, clowns. I'm, we leave them in the dust, bro. <laughs> we leave them in the dust. And I, I'm not whooping up your ego. I'm talking about your collars. You I know, know I know. Hey, hey, the, the it's an embarrassment of riches. I always say our cup runneth over with amazing people. Uh, go ahead. So, what are your thoughts here? No need, no need to fluff the rest of us up. We already know how awesome we are, and you're included in that. Okay. What else do you got regarding this topic tonight? Go right ahead. Yeah. Well, everybody brought up so many things. I took a page and a half of notes, but I, I had to reconsolidate them down to like, you know, three short things. <laughs> okay, all right. The, uh, you know, uh, the, the one thing that I want to say about dreaming, and everybody's touched upon this, and I kind of kicked off the show, and I was talking about, you know, dreaming is really, it's a doorway, it's a portal, it's a, it can be a way to access consciousness on multiple levels. And, you know, I said that to kick off the show, and I think different people, you know, touched on that, affirmed that, confirmed that, reaffirmed that in, in multiple ways. Um, so I, I, I think, and, and I said that that's a wonderful thing about dreaming. We all do it every night, and it's something we have access to um, really easily. And I, there's another really big point I wanted to get to earlier, which was, um, is the dream world real? Um, can it cross over to reality? Um, and I, I've actually had a couple experiences where the dream world crossed over to physical reality. And 
I'll skip the long stories of the dreams. I'd, I'd love to tell them sometime, but hey, hey, uh, we got hey, God willing, we got tomorrow. God willing, we got tomorrow. We we do dream shows from time to time. You don't feel like you got to get every damn thing out every show. You're okay. Go right ahead. But for brevity, um, and I I told one person on Discord this personal story of a dream, and during the dream something happened um, that affected me that made my my it made my body buzz. It made my mind buzz. And um, it got so intense, it woke me up from the dream. But here's what's weird. Here's what's really weird, Mike. When I woke up, my whole body was still buzzing. I'm, I'm talking every cell in, from my, my big toe, you know, to, to my thigh, to, to, to my eyeballs was still buzzing buzzing with this like electricity with this energy and this lasted for 15 minutes i mean it 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 totally what i experienced there like i said long story really intense but what i experienced in the dream time crossed over into waking consciousness and affected my physical body so um yeah, that's kind of weird. That's kind of like, um, you know, where where does dream time reality leave off, and where does waking reality begin? And I I had another experience where uh, same sort of thing happened, and um, it it actually created a sonic boom. And I I was laying in bed with another uh, person, and uh, we both heard it at and she actually woke up before me and 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 was like concerned and thought something was going on with me and like what the hell's happening and i was having a particularly intense dream and there was a sonic boom and i hadn't heard one since like the mid 70s or something i mean it it had been forever they 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 barred you know supersonic flights and maybe in the 70s i was hearing a uh, nuclear test out in utah or something but it was kind of weird, um, but I think there can be things where dream time experiences cross over to reality, and that's because, like I just said at the beginning, they're affecting consciousness. They're they're affecting you at the consciousness level, and you at the physical level. That's you as consciousness inhabiting the physical. So all these worlds. Uh, levels of reality, etc., uh, sort of blend together. Um, and I want to go to your final question of: Are there the 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 dream police uh, sort of thing, and are there people that control it or regulate it or etc.? And I will just say from my experiences, which I said have been manifold over a long time, um, I have encountered. I don't I don't think it really controls dreaming so much as more like out of body experiences, astral travel, etc. But um I have encountered beings which I call gatekeepers. And I think there's another thing called the golden band, which pretty much kind of keeps people within the realm of earth and regular dreaming and like you can go astral but not that far beyond. And then beyond that, <clears throat> there are some barriers. And there is the golden band, um, which surrounds the earth and prevents you from going beyond the astral realm. And then beyond that to other levels, there's these gatekeepers. And these beings, you have to be able to, uh, they test you. And you have to be able to pass their tests. And so I'm not saying those are like the dream police or something like that. But there is something very similar where there are, um, you know, some beings or forces that kind of uh, uh, regulate things and how far you can go. Uh, so uh, and uh, other than that, <clears throat> you know, I, you know, MJ was talking about precognition dreams. I've had those. I've had them my whole life. I've I've had fifty of them or hundred of them. If you haven't had them, you're like, oh yeah, okay, you dream the future, whatever. But when you've had fifty or hundred times in your life that you dream the future, you know they're real. 
you know they exist. Now, yeah. MJ, he hit further out in the future. Me, myself, 95% of my precognition dreams, they happen the very next day. You asked MJ, can you incubate them? Can you do them on purpose? He said, no, me neither. They just spontaneously happen. Sometimes I'll get one that's a week out, you know, whatever. But, uh, and then final thought, um, we had uh, uh, the, the, the calls about like the past life dreams and um, the caller that had one with the, in Germany and the three days and, and uh, you talked about Rohan and uh, his dreams. I had one that I, I was like 1860s uh, sort of thing. And um, it was me. I knew it was me. And I was walking into this, like, um, it was like the English Parliament. And um, <laughs> of I, course. I, I, I was walking in and they had, a, I had an assigned seat. I, I was like a member of parliament and I, I was walking in. It was like, Oh, here's your seat. It was like halfway down, you know, fourth one from the right, you know, whatever. And, I, but I, it, during the dream, I knew it was me, but this was like, you know, 200 years ago or something, but it was, it was uh, totally like a past life dream uh, that, happen so yeah time travel and dreams in the back into the past yeah um into the future yeah uh precognition dreams yeah uh the dream space is is totally outside time it's totally outside dimensions and i think it's a fascinating topic i think you i think you need to do another show on it before august we will you're right we're oh, oh we will we, we usually probably average about one dream show every let's say couple three months because just because it's one of those things that's super high engagement and we never really get through all of it like every single time there's like people that, that, that still want to tell stories and so it is it is something we revisit from time to time we will do one before august you have my word okay all right because yeah, you know, like like tonight's show brought up, there are uh, fifty hundred different aspects to this topic, and it, it is just fascinating, fascinating. And like you said, it's let's lay down some stuff um, that's recorded for all time. That's be before stuff comes out in the popular media, and you guys all talk about all these Marvel comic stuff and this sci fi stuff that. I am totally oblivious to, I, I don't, I have no experience with any of that, but when I listen to it, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just like, not, not only that, Hey, you know, what's crazy. Yeah. Not only that, go fact check that shit. And it's crazy. It's like, it's like a Marvel comics has been, has been, uh, predicting the fucking future for a long time and we got james we got night stalker we got rivers we got so many people that are locked into like the comic zeitgeist that it like i know you've heard of this aspect of um uh pop culture sort of a uh with with setting this up for a, the future that's to come right what's that called it's called uh it's coming to me it's coming to me there's a particular term for it it'll come to me but but basically they're they're setting this up for this future that uh uh it's conditioning it's some sort of uh conditioning in the sense of well you know here's kind of what may happen wink wink but then the thing the things they say continue to fucking happen it's insane like the simpsons and all the rest of this it's nuts um uh god it's on the tip of my tongue that what it's actually called there's a term for it but anyway we'll get back to that as well we haven't done a show on that in like a year and a half or something so uh we got we got to roll matt i gotta i'm, I'm doing the pee, pee dance i gotta piss so uh so so i uh, appreciate it thank you so much uh let's go to james uh everybody give matt a follow his books down below get a free copy while it lasts 50 copies links in the description coupon code appreciate it matt thanks for thanks for being patient and waiting for so long to get back in this is what i'm saying if we uh let it breathe you see how many people call it's it's fucking incredible isn't it let's go to uh thanks Thanks, Matt in Colorado. Let's go to uh, back to James. James in Michigan. You there, buddy? You got you got anything on yeah. all the shit everybody said? <laughs> Good God, I do. If you want to step away for a minute, I could probably go. All right, sure. And, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I'm going to yeah. step away real quick. You do the thing. I'll be right back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. James of Celsius to Paranormal, and uh, I'll be right back. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. So I do agree that a lot of times with a lot of people, these things, these experiences they're accidental they happen 
We don't know why or how. Um, and I do... I've, I've heard people that say they, they, they practice and they try to get better at having those experiences all the time. And that's amazing for those people that want to do that and that do that and really figure out how to develop those kind of abilities. I, I, and that's, that's a, uh, I think that's a choice. And I think that it's not for everyone, though. I, I know just for myself, the sleep that I get, I need it. And a lot of those experiences, when I have them, when I wake up, like as we already mentioned a couple of times, I'm pretty tired. It, it wears me out. And I wake up and I'm t- still tired. So, um, but I do think there's there, a lot of this is accidental. And I do find it interesting that there are all these references to people having encounters with other beings. And, of course, it's hard to say who or what they are or what they're purposes are or where they come from um the connections to as jennifer was talking about the connections to uh fae or fairy experiences and then also ufo or or abduction experiences i definitely can see that i've heard enough experiences from people over the years in shows where I, i have no problem believing that that can happen that happens um but i do think that in most cases we're not supposed to go to other worlds or to other other galaxies or even just out into space too far. Um, but I think it's amazing when it happens. I think we we should always, you know, especially when it's not a bad experience, when it's not a negative, negative experience, um, just catalog that. And just just make sure you you keep that written down or in your in your your thoughts and you. Because they are amazing experiences, and um, as I always say, most of the stuff that I've been through has not been too bad overall. I think there's this this um, this idea in a lot of the media that anything that weird that happens has to be bad, and as I said before, I don't think that's the case. I think there there is bad stuff that happens. I've heard stories of it. I've had a couple of things happen myself. But um, it's not all that way. And uh, so, yeah, just uh, amazing calls from everyone tonight. And um, I agree, it's, there's so much here to talk about. I don't think... I, I said in the chat earlier, I, there are entire episodes on, of different podcasts on these topics. And, and I haven't looked, but I imagine you could probably find entire podcasts on the subjects, too. Um, because everyone has dreams. Uh, even if it's only once in their twice in a year or multiple years, everyone has dreams. And so there's always dreams to talk about somewhere. Exactly. I'm, uh, I'm putting you the skids, James. I've been here for a while. I'm just, let's, let's see how James, how long James can talk. <laughs> it's a good thing I heard something go on the microphone. Now. Okay. All right, you, all right. <laughs> you, heard, you heard me licking my lips. <laughs> <laughs> heard something yeah. <laughs> no uh, uh, and you're right james I, and this is why i think like i said i call this a high engagement show because everybody dreams even myself right like i said i don't remember them well or if it, rarely i remember them and when i do it's like just fragments right i can't ever give you like a full like you know full-on four-hour like dream sequence it just never sticks in my brain but it doesn't matter right because like it's enough it's compelling enough for us to talk about and so uh yeah uh, amazing stuff man and that so and the thing is too you you guys know me we're going to do more dream shows in the future because of course we have this lead up and this is this is the crazy thing about the zeitgeist and being a synchro mystic which i never considered myself but uh, the the king of synchro mysticism derek the night stalker he he considers me one so i i guess i'll defer to the master there but uh as this dream like i said maybe we can call this a summer of dreams because we got in the early August, we've got this Sandman coming out and uh, we've got the, the Multiverse of Madness, which again uh, hits uh, from Doctor Strange hits like uh, June 24th or something like that on Disney+. Plus. So, I mean, uh, it seems like there's, there's something happening here and there seems to be a third link in there. We don't know just yet, but I got a feeling something's going to pop up that's going to link this whole fucking summer together. Last year was the Summer of Saucers. This year might be the Summer of Dreams. Uh, Robert over on the Rock Fan thank you for the tip i appreciate it he says i'm never mad when you don't mention me mike i know you don't it's an old throwback joke to uh when i mentioned a bunch of people that called and i forgot you and you kind of fussed in the chat and i know you were kidding and i knew you were kidding and we were kidding back and forth
forward. So I, that's the joke. It's an old throwback joke. It has nothing to do with you, nothing personal. Thank you for the tip. I appreciate it, my friend. All right, let's get the fuck out. James, anything else before we wrap this MF up? No, that was um, great calls, like I said, and great chat. And, uh, and yeah, I enjoyed this show a lot. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Look, we're, we're about to wrap this MF up, but we cannot yet unless we hear from Bailey. Are you there, Bailey? Bailey, Bailey, are you just dipping in to listen? What's going on, Bailey? Sometimes Bailey sneaks in and doesn't say anything. How are you? Welcome to Trouble Minds. Hey, sorry. I'm just listening. Sorry. Right, you're, you're, you're loud. You're loud. Just, uh, just let me know so I don't uh, embarrass you and call on you. So it's like the kid in class that doesn't want to be called on. I'm like, Bailey, in the back. You didn't raise your hand, but I'm calling on you anyway. <laughs> All right, let's roll. Thanks for thanks for dropping in, saying hi, uh, Bailey, good friend of mine, good friend of the show. All right, let's do it, uh, James. You got a you got a James throw for us. Let's roll. I do. All right, I'm gonna smash the button and uh, play the music, and we're doing it. I'd go back to everybody else too, but we're we're so long, and I just my back is hurting, and I can't I can't stand up anymore, guys. Well, uh, you know me. We'll go long if we have to, but uh, also I want to sit down. <laughs> I'm gonna go rest. Seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven tomorrow, seven p.m. Pacific. <laughs> James, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, or robots, um, uh, uh, what, uh, what 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 aliens, greys. Reptilians, everywhere in between. I present to you James Salcedo of Salcedo Paranormal. Go right ahead, my friend. Don't dream your life. Live your dream. From Mark Twain. There it is, Mark Twain. That that dude had some quotes, I tell you what. All right, check it out. Uh, the bad news is we're done. The good news is, God willing, we got tomorrow. That one's for Jane New York. What's up, buddy, if you're out there listening? Now, as this finishes, right, if you want to help the show, there are a number of ways. You can sub up on Patreon. You can sub up directly on Twitch. Twitch is the worst way because they literally take half of it. But if you have Amazon Prime, you can sub up for free, like at no additional cost, I mean. So if, if you're like, hey, you already got Prime, do that. That's the best way. But they literally take half of it. Uh, other ways, uh, good ways are Patreon, Rockfin's probably the best way because uh, you get not just Trouble Minds exclu- uh, premium content on demand, you get all the rest of the stuff on Rockfin, which is amazing. Patreon always works. Uh, of course, there are troubledfans.com with the hats, the shirts, the stickers, more designs coming soon. Working on them with uh, Mrs. Strange. She's getting super into it. She designed the last batch of shirts, if you saw them, and she's uh, working on a new batch coming up. So this is the thing, right? Yeah, th- Those are the ways. If you don't want to spend money, but you love the show, spread the word. Spread the word. Spread the word. We get so many people just word of mouth. We can beat the algorithms with old school word of mouth. And also, the other way, listen to the podcast feed. Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, wherever you get your podcasts, completely free. There's ads baked in. And listening to an old show that you haven't heard helps 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 troubled minds and kicks a couple cents this way so it's easy as that right there's so many ways to help thank you so much for all the engagement all the great thoughts all the great calls all the great chat uh, like i said we're blessed we're blessed and uh, our cup runneth over with amazing people and amazing calls and that's that it's a wrap let's get the fuck out of here how's it go anybody want to do this as we end be sure be strong be true Thank you, James, and thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. And please, don't forget, follow all these amazing people. Links are in the description down below. Uh, We got uh, Robert and Matt in Colorado. They got books. Uh, Everybody else has uh, YouTube channels or podcasts or everything else. Please, go give them a follow. Uh, This show is not just me, right? Like, it's not. It's nice that you think that, and I know you don't think that, but I want you to not think that because it's you, it's us. I'm me, you're you, but together we're us. And you see what a powerful thing it can be. So please go, it literally it takes like five minutes of your time. Please go follow all the folks. Link in the description down below, okay? All right? I'm asking you a favor for me to you. Pretty please follow all these amazing folks. Thank you so much. As we roll, GTFO, be well. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey, hey. Hey. Okay.